All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to NECC tonight. Well, we have three great series starting off here, though, with the first one. It is Holy Cross Crusaders versus Oni Vermilion A. My name is Dexatron. I am joined by Worst. Man, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. Ready to kick off the action tonight. We do obviously have uh, kind of a little a start to the day here between Holy Cross Crusaders and Vermilion A. And I think a big thing is coming into this Crusaders have been on a rampage so far, 3-0 and already in these first three weeks, whereas Vermillion had that buy, I believe, in the first week of games and then kind of has gone 1-1, one and one, actually beating Holy Cross Purple last week in a 3-0 fashion, so maybe trying to get some revenge for the Crusaders' sides against their fallen brethren. But for now, it's kind of just seeing how this league is going to develop in the emergence northeast right we're seeing who's coming out on top what are the teams to fear what are the teams that are kind of have some stuff to work on so far it has seemed that the crusaders are on top of their game right now but obviously it's only been three games still a lot more matches to go a lot more weeks of gameplay to go before we kind of dis uh, decide what teams are that uh, different echelons you know yeah, and like you said, the Crusaders coming in this one three and zero, and like you also said, the uh, Vermilion team beat the other uh, Holy Cross team here. So maybe going in this one, they have a little bit of an advantage, knowing maybe how this Crusaders Crusaders team is gonna play since they played their brother team. Yeah, and I think going into this, we do actually have our first map already kind of selected for us here on control. It is going to be Nepal, an old classic in Overwatch. And kind of has a lot of different stuff you can do with all those different subtypes. I think that's the biggest thing controls always brought to the table is that for a lot of them, there's a lot of different strategies that come out on different sub control maps that are kind of like kind of ebb and flow in terms of how dominant they are. You think of Li Jiang, you think of kind of like the far, far on like outside, but then when you go inside, it's Ryan dominated, that kind of idea. It kind of carries over to a lot of the other control maps. Nepal is no exception. Again, Pharaoh is a pretty big one. You have a lot of open space for that Pharaoh on Village, on Shrine, but then you go into Sanctum and it becomes a little bit harder to pilot. So Ryan kind of takes up a big spot there. So I'm going to be interested to see what these two teams are kind of looking towards in Nepal. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what these two teams come out with to show us here. Uh, but I believe we can introduce the teams here a little bit first. Uh, <laughs> um, but so we'll start off with the Holy Cross Crusaders here. You have Rayfos, Unicorn, Moving, Three, Banana, and 50 Echoes here. Now, this is a pretty good team so far. Like you said, 3-0 and on the season up until this point and really have only dropped three maps all season. Two last week against Thomas Red and one the previous week against New England Tech. So they have been on a roll here to start. Yeah, and obviously I think it's kind of interesting that the last series did go five maps. It went the distance against Thomas Red, but they're going to kind of want it. Like, even if you kind of come out in that series, in a five-map series, at always the next week you're always like, we want to clean it up, right? We want to make it 3-0, 3-1 if we possibly can. But this is the roster they decided to come out swinging on as we are going to go over to Vermilion side and see what they are cooking up with their roster. It is going to be Silver Slush, uh, Yui, Clopper, uh, their Iron Taco and White Boy 101. As um, this is going to be kind of their time to kind of like push against Holy Cross Crusaders and kind of bat up against this team that's kind of already established themselves as a strong contender. Yeah, and honestly, with the Crusaders going 3-2 last week, you know, a little bit of a more tested team. This team only coming in their third game, only coming into their third game right now, lost the first one, one to three, but did have a really strong performance last week against the other Holy Cross team where they swept them in three maps. Yeah. And uh, again, if you want to start off strong, it's going to have to start out on control. It has kind of been the de facto starting map in Overwatch for however long I can remember. So uh, obviously you can't draw on it. So it's a great starter and ending map. Um, there's literally no possible way unless you just don't ever cap the point. But then it's not a draw. It's a never-ending cycle of torment for people. So I don't think uh, that's going to happen tonight as going to be Nepal, like I said before. And I think depending on what these teams are leaning towards, I think it's going to give us a good indication of what the rest of the series is going to look like in terms of what compositions are going to be played. Because right now, it's actually pretty open in terms of what mm -hmm. the meta is. The meta becomes very stagnant or like locked down when pro play, like highlight like pro play, like, oh, well, that kind of stuff is going on because people just copy that and just take that. But... That's not happening right now. There's no contenders right now. There's no owl right now. So everything is open for what if interpretation the, the players have. 
Yeah, and honestly, like you said, it's an open book right now. These teams can come out with something that might just be honestly absolutely crazy, and they might just make it work just because, like you said, there's nothing going on right now at the pro level or at the second or at the second level right there. So it's really up to their imaginations right now and what that what each team can make work. Yeah, and I think if you were trying to come in and say, like, okay, what is the highest level we've really seen recently? Well, it's been Overwatch World Cup trials that have been happening across the world. Those have been streamed and had a lot of good tier two, tier three, some tier two players, even some tier one representation in terms of an entire Overwatch team that was like competing in the North American one, the uh, tier three <laughs> one. Um, they didn't end up winning it, unfortunately enough, but yeah, you saw a lot of different things come out. Reinhardt was a big winner in the Season 3 patch. Uh, 100 da damage, fire strikes, faster charges, just, I mean, in general, Reinhardt is a monster right now, but that hasn't stopped other things from popping up. Ball as well, a monster after Season 3 patch, and Ramatra, still kind of holding in there, did get that nerf on his ultimate, but is still an extremely strong character right now, and it actually is going to be them rolling out on it uh, for the Vermilion side. Yeah, but when you look at the Holy Cross side, Rayfos coming out here with the Roadhog, it's a little bit of an interesting pick there, I, I have to say, just based off what I've been seeing uh, at other levels of play right now. But they're probably comfortable on Roadhog, and hey, you can potentially hook people off into the pit here, so it might just go their way. They immediately try to throw a hook there, but already you see the Ice Wall come out, try to get Silver Slush, but they are able to escape and keep themselves alive. This fight is just going on right now. Someone has to make the first mistake here. Each team playing against Marvel, we see the hook come out, and actually it's going to be Rayfos. Rayfos finding the opposite tank of Silver Slush there to get everything started. Holy Cross already on the little bit of the man advantage. And look at what that does to Vermillion. They immediately just fall back without that tank. Yeah, and I think Roadhog, after that kind of late season two patch, where he kind of got, a lot of people would say gutted, but I would say definitely knocked down a couple pegs, uh, hasn't really been meta since. It was a kind of a hog counter before then. Hasn't, or it, has, it was a kind of a Winston counter before then, but Winston not really meta right now, so doesn't really have that place to shine but you know they're making it work yeah we already see the stick come out there on the silver slush get saved by the suzu there now we're just trying to see any damage thrown in again it's silver slush falling first here for vermilion and again you see them immediately fall back not wanting to lose anyone else not want to have anyone feed into holy cross right now but they might just get their wish there as moving three finds the iron taco there a little bit of a mistake coming out from vermilion and plopper looking like they're just gonna jump off the map maybe to make a swap here they are very close on that visor though yeah, and now we are going to see a lot of the ultimates coming up online for Holy Cross Crusaders. Uh, funnily enough, not the Hog Alt uh, going to be coming up right now, as they're going to have Dano, they're going to have that uh, male, a lot of things that can just kind of lock you down in a position. As they're going to be going out to the left side, the wall going to miss slightly, so not going to be an insta kill off that. Yeah, but look at Plopper all the way behind, but they immediately get high nooned out there by Unicorn. Whoever the Iron Taco takes here, Rifos Banana comes right back and finds Yui here. Holy Cross still keeping ahead of this one, but we do see Silver Slush pop her ultimate there, just trying to find anyone right now. Unicorn's their main target, but Unicorn staying alive for what seems like forever. They're being pocketed there by Banana, but the Banana will eventually fall there as well. You see Moving 3 just going to go back, stall out on point as long as they can. They also do have 50 Echoes there, but 50 Echoes first one to fall in that one. And now we see Silver Slush get hooked off the map. Vermilion able to retake the point, but Rayfos there gets a highlight play. I think the biggest thing there was that mailed. I mean, you have the Nano come out on Unicorn, and they found the pick onto the visor, but wasn't really able to find anything else. But this is going to be a big hook. I think that might actually kill the Moya. Yeah, not enough horizontal movement in that phase. Look at that. The hook into the whole hog. They're going after that Reaper. They wait for that Wraith mode to end and immediately take him out. White Boy, though, comes back and finds Unicorn. 50 Echoes takes care of White Boy there to avenge their fallen teammate. And now Rifos here just going after Silver Slush, who has swapped over now to the Sigma. But they're getting pestered from behind by moving three. And another hook into the pit coming out from the Hogman himself. Yep, and the Sigma was kind of a pick to kind of counter out this Hog, but not going to really have enough impact in this round. Late May Alt is going to find the Moira. They're going to stagger onto this point, not even going to be able to get a touch in. And we're seeing Holy Cross Crusaders make this hog pick work despite its kind of perceived power level. And I think a big part of that is the disruption of the hook is still always going to be there. You're still just yoinking a member out of their kind of death ball clump and saying, everyone on my team, focus this target down. And so far, Crusaders have been doing that perfectly, whereas Vermillion, they have kind of had a issue of getting in as five and staying alive 
in the midst of it. And now we're going to see the swap up here for Crusaders. It was the Hog only for that Sanctum, where you can get those environmental kills that we saw in spades from Rifos. They're now going to be swapping over this Rhine. I said this before, Rhine, a huge, like, I got a huge boost from that Season 3 patch. And right now, I think Rhine is kind of in the focal point. He's one of the best tanks in the game. He's so survivable with just base 625 HP, a 1200 HP shield, and there's really not a lot of ways to remove that Ryan from a position if he wants to stay there. Yeah, but also a couple other swaps coming out. Silver Slush, biggest one over there on Vermilion, going over to the Zarya now. Yui, now on the Reaper here, but looks like the Crusaders want to hold on this high ground for the moment right now. You eventually see Rapos fall down to the ground. Looks like they have their target there. It's the Ana there of Iron Taco. They get Bubble to save their life, but it's only going to save their life momentarily here as we do see Rapos there take care of them. Flopper, though, able to find 50 Echoes, kind of even everything out. Moving three finds. Flopper, Rapos finds Yui there, and this should be another quick point cap for the Crusaders. Looks like though that everyone on Vermilion just kind of kind of feed into this right now and respawn Yeah, and this has kind of been the composition that has been cropping up I think a lot of time you'd see Cassidy over that sojourn right now I mean, it's kind of a toss-up but Cassidy extremely strong as well after season 3 patch and uh, This kind of composition just focuses on okay Where are they moving and how can we just walk into them and intercept them at their weakest point right there? It was iron taco who's lagging a bit behind they sped onto them and just hunted them down for, uh, relentlessly, and once that honor went down, there wasn't really enough to keep them sustained throughout the fight. Yeah, and look at this, a Vermilion already making a swap at the tank. It's Silver Slush going back to the Ramatra. Moving three finds Plopper out here early in this fight. Fire Strike finding a lot of damage there from Rifos. They do have their Shatter ready to go here, but they might hold on to it for a little bit. Rifos' Fire Strikes have been on point tonight. They find Iron Taco right there, and I'm surprised we're not seeing a little bit of a fallback coming here from Vermilion. Three of them just want to continue to fight in this small room. Here comes the Shatter. It finds three already. Two taken out. The third one running for their life. Three, four down. And that's another quick team fight win there for Holy Cross. Yeah, and when Vermilion is just going in through that small choke point like that, those fire strikes, that 10 extra damage adds up, not only in terms of the damage it's doing, but the ult charge you're gaining from it. And it makes it so that Holy Cross is just able to just put so much damage through the choke that they're never able to push because their back line is actually getting threatened by these fire strikes. And now they're going to have to use their ultimates to push through here. Generally, you would want just walk away and go main or something, but they are... They are determined to go through this top right. Yeah, we do see Silver does have that ultimate ready to go here on the Ramatra. I wonder if we see it come out here. Uh, but look at Vermilion. Five ultimates already. Oh, here comes one. Actually, here comes four of them at the moment coming out. However, all the kills going the way of Holy Cross here for the moment. Silver Slush does find Banana the Beat being forced out there by 50 Echoes to keep themselves alive. But it's just Silver Slush right now for Vermilion. And that is it. That's another team fight one there for Holy Cross. And that might just be the map. Oh, I mean, yeah, there's the Shatter in the spawn, the overclock to finish it up, and that's going to be map one going the way of Holy Cross Crusaders. I think domination for them, uh, and really showing off that they, they have a couple different looks they're going for here. They're looking towards that hog and uh, environmental points, which is really only contained to control, right, a lot of the time, but definitely that Reinhardt composition is in their repertoire, and I don't think uh, Vermilion really has a uh, definitive answer themselves just yet into what they're going to do to this Reinhardt. Yeah, and so far, just Holy Cross proving why they are a 3-0 and team so far this season. And just Vermilion, they're 1-1. One one. They had that first week off. It seemed like that was a really, really bad map for them. They kind of struggled a little bit at all points. Uh, they did have some highlights, so they did, you know, cap point there on the on the first map and on the second point as well, capped it first. But then after that, it just all kind of went downhill for them. Yeah, and I think... And this is kind of something I, I kind of like for um, for Holy Cross in terms of they're in the emergency league, right? It is the it is the second the second league, right? Of its navigators, then it goes into that emergency league, and I think Rush is kind of something that even in Overwatch One, right? You would see a lot of teams if you could just get a really strong Rush composition nailed down or drilled down into your team, you could do amazing in a lot of skill brackets um, up until like the highest at uh, the highest ends because. That composition is just so survivable and so strong at just taking map control away from the enemy team with that May, with that Reinhardt just getting into any place you want, just bullying the other team out of it, that mm -hmm. a lot of teams uh, struggle to kind of keep up with the tempo that it kind of exerts on them. And I think right now, 
it was a little bit too much there. Uh, Vermillion didn't really have the the tempo to keep up with it. They didn't have like decision making of like, okay, when what are the the audibles we have to go for? Like, when do we just have to walk out, like walk to a different area? When can we not just like kind of ram our heads in the top right? But I think we still have a lot of maps to go. Yeah, we still have a lot of maps to go, but I want to kind of highlight Rayfos there. They picked Hog on that first map, and it was it was definitely a situational pick there, playing it to get those hooks, to get those environmental kills. But a lot of the times, they got hooks, and they pulled in that hooked player to their team, and their team really helped them finish off that player, and it gave them an advantage every time. The first pick of the series was actually Rayfos finding uh, the tank there for Vermilion, and it kind of just started everything off for holy cross there that was their go button and you immediately saw uh vermilion once they lost their tank they completely exited that fight backed out not wanting to feed into it anymore yeah and we do have a substitution coming in uh king will be coming in for 50 echoes on the holy cross crusaders side so they will be making a little substitution there and also we are going to king's row this is a pick from uh vermilion and i don't believe i agree with it uh, I know Parisio was banned, which is where I would have actually wanted to take a team like this because Ryan, not as strong on this map. A lot of high ground and open areas to cover. So good ban there from uh, Holy Crusaders. But King's Row as the counter pick here, as they didn't show off that Ryan look. They did show off that Ramatra. And I think Ramatra actually does decent into the Ryan matchup. But I think actually struggles in terms of when you get walled off, you're not as survivable as a Ryan because you don't have that shield. Nemesis form into right click is strong, but damage reduction isn't as good as just damage mitigation at that point. Because when Orion puts a shield up, he's not taking any damage, essentially. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the Nemesis form, you're still going to be taking a little bit of that damage where it's going to pressure you out. So um, I think for now, we'll see how this pick ends up working for them here. Yeah, and honestly, I kind of have to agree with you a little bit too. I don't think this is the right pick for them, but Parisio was banned. I felt like that was probably the map they were going to pick. We oh. saw the Brawl come out there for Holy Cross, and they seem to really, really like playing the Brawl. And King's Row is probably the brawliest of Brawl maps there is in is Overwatch. Uh, and it's a classic, like you said. Uh, but it's just one of those, it's just one of those maps that no matter what type of comp you're playing, even though it's played into a lot by brawl teams, I feel like every team has practiced on this map enough to say, hey, we're confident that we can win on this map no matter what. Yeah, probably one of the most scrimmed maps. Um, there's a lot of maps that are like under scrimmed, right? Where it's like Route 66 mm -hmm. is like under scrimmed in my opinion in terms of like the experience I've seen with teams where people like kind of forget that's a map sometimes. It's weird. <laughs> um, but King's Row is definitely always, almost always in that rotation where Okay, guys, you have a hybrid to play. What are we, what are we screaming? Oh, let's just go King's Row. Like, who cares? Let's yeah. just go King's Row. Because it's kind of this comfort map. It's a map that has been a lot of time spent on it by players, by teams. Um, and so I, I think Overwatch 1, it was very much, especially during towards the end of Overwatch 1, it was very much like, okay, you're going to this map. You're you're playing a Ryan Diva May kind of composition, right? I think now in Overwatch 2, it's actually more open in terms of what you want to play because there isn't that second off tank to kind of um dictate Help. like what the map kind of plays like there's a lot more like openness it feels a lot more open there's a lot less stuffy mm -hmm. than it used to be um so you can actually go for like doomfist or winston or stuff like that if you want to if like that's what you're like really going towards it's not as strong i'd say as the ryan stuff but i think it's a little bit more open than it was uh previously i would be a hundred percent surprised to see a doomfist come out here i'm but a doomfist like your... connoisseur so you know understandable man <laughs> understandable but like you said everyone is scrimming this map so much it has a nickname scrims row for a reason mm -hmm. but it does look like we will be seeing holy cross attacking here first i believe this is always the right move uh actually no holy cross picked what side they want to go on first so they're wanting to carry this momentum into this map here and they're gonna be attacking first and they're teasing us with a ball pick I would I wouldn't be a hundred percent surprised. They shown off the Ryan, but definitely can play. Like I said, you can play ball here. I think playing ball uh, in, a, in a very long time ago was not kind of a play because again it was kind of stuffed out. You could kind of get marked super easily. It's a lot more open. Ball can maneuver a lot more freely. I still would kind of like to see them go to that rush because we've seen it work already. But you know, and also uh, in terms of like picking attack or defense, I've had this kind of mental debate a lot of times like what do i want first well if i defend first well i can kind of have like a checkpoint of what i need to do on my attack but if i attack first i can see what they're trying to play and i can counter pick them first whereas instead if i defend first and they come out on some wacky thing and i don't know what they're doing i could get snowballed 
and the map could kind of get out of my control. So it's kind of a what do you want to go for kind of thing. But they are coming out of the ball here, and instantly you're going to see that ball come out into the top and just slam on a point. Yeah, but we already have one kill coming out there from Plopper on the Vermilion team. However, Plopper immediately falls there to Rapos, and you want to see Holy Cross here just try to find another kill off that one, and you already see moving three with that far with that Mercy pocket here, just trying to find anyone. They were going up to support, well, boost themselves away. Now they're just going after anyone they possibly can. You still hear Rapos in the background, just slamming down on the ground, but Silver Slush able to take care of them. Rapos still comes right back and finds another quick trade kill out there able to get over that ice wall and the res gonna be able to come out here that's a little bit of a mistake coming out here from vermilion early but they have done good so far let's just see how they continue here yeah and right now plopper is actually doing so much work to try and keep them on this point finding both the pharah and the mercy it's gonna be unicorn finally shutting down the reign of terror but not close enough and now the ana once this nemesis form comes up i don't think they're gonna be much longer for as well but there's kind of two things you can do into this rock and into this ball fair mercy kind of thing is you can kind of play back hope that plopper you can kind of sustain plopper for you and engage and they can deal with it or you can go aggro go for their most dive member which is actually going to be their honor and you can just go aggro and try and stop them before they can get in yeah but rapos here popping out Oof. the minefield immediately finds three kills off it looking for a fourth here trying just to punch the Ramon to the death here will be able to take care of silver slush there and now they're trying to swing their way up there but with Plopper falling down to the ground there. They're gonna get the solo team kill all by themselves there. And they're still on a wrecking havoc right now. Looking for more people moving free, able to find White Boy there. And we now see Rifos here just breathing down the neck of Yui. They have to ice block to keep themselves alive here. Holy Cross only having one person on the point right now is a little bit confusing me. But at this moment right now, it seems like they're gonna easily cap this first point. Yeah, and they are going to finally cap this point. I don't think anyone went to touch. Nope, that mantra is still back. And now you're going to see moving three go onto the flank and see what they can find with this barrage. Barrage, most effective when you kind of just show up in someone's face and just jump scare them with a, uh, ironically, barrage of damage where they're just not going to be able to respond to it with any kind of cooldown because they just kind of need to die. But, um, and this might just be the opportunity for them. But they find one. They do see Yui use their ice block there. Yui does have their Blizzard ready to go right now. So that's going to be a scary ultimate whenever that one comes out, especially within the close quarter spot right now. But you saw moving three sneak behind the back there. We might be seeing come out. Here comes Mirage looking for anyone, not finding anyone yet. Instead, it's Rapos finding Iron Taco there. And now moving three just trying to get rid of White Boy here. And they're able to take care of White Boy. However, Vermilion doing a good job here, just kind of staggering out and stalling out the cart. The Blizzard comes out here from Yui. But but the two members of Vermilion that were on the cart both die, so that blizzard is kind of a wasted ultimate there. I'd be surprised if they're not swapping off right now. Um, but looks like they're staying with the with the, the May, and I think if you're playing the May with this composition, I think you really want to be trying to trap the Ana, where the only real thing an Ana can do if five people start running at them is kind of like play corners and play angles where they can run into uh, more defensible positions, and you kind of use that Mabel to stop them from doing that. But I don't think we've really seen that just yet. Rafos has their minefield ready to go there. They get the nano spike plopper to death. Then they find White Boy there with the guns. Now they're just rolling through everyone here on Vermilion looking for more. The transcend or the coalescence coming out here from Iron Taco dealing a lot of damage. Juwi able to find Unicorn there with that headshot, with that icicle shot. And now Rafos here just being the biggest thorn in the side of this Vermilion team finds a kill there onto Banana. However, we see moving three up here with that pocket from King popping that Valkyrie now to just try to deal as much damage as they possibly can. Iron Taco taken out by Rapos here. There's a fight continues right now. However, it's really just this May of Yui for Vermilion at the moment. You do see some members coming back, but Yui falls and you immediately see Plopper just fall back. However, it's 2v1 right there. Moving three, able to take him out with essentially a whole help there from his team. However, uh, they forgot the card. Yeah, we don't be moving those. <laughs> as they will finally have a member go onto that cart, start moving that in, get that second checkpoint, as Rafe is still denying uh, a trip back to the spawn room, as uh, they're going to have to start using these ultimates, right? Like, you, you, you're almost going up on another blizzard for Yuri before you can even get the opportunity to pop the other ones. Silver has to pop both her, her nemesis form and the shield, but at least Yuri's able to trade it back and punish Unicorn for their overaggression. Yeah, Unicorn's sticking on this Widow right now. I, I like how long they're stuck with it, but maybe it might be time to swap here. However, we do see them get res, so no swap coming out this time. White Boy able to take care of King there, so no 
mercy to this pharmacy combo right now as they try to just get some shots in there on Plopper, who does have their high noon ready to go here. Actually, four of the five members of Vermilion have their ultimates ready to go here. And you see Holy Cross here actually respecting the space here, especially with King being out. Iron Taco. Goodbye, uh, Iron Taco. <laughs> don't want to talk about it. I understand the minefield now coming out here from Rapos. Not going to find anyone just yet, but here comes the Annihilation mode here from Silver Slush. And the Barrage coming out from Moving 3 finds 2. Make it 4 there as Unicorn finds Plopper. And now Holy Cross can easily push this card a little bit before we see Vermillion come back out. Yeah, and now you're going to see the swap over to the Winston and the Drunkrat off of that May and that Matra. I don't really think the Drunkrat's going to solve a lot of issues, but Winston definitely has more ability to get on the auto fast, but with a nano ball in their face, I don't think they're going to be able to get past this choke point. A nano ball, rockets being flung in from above. The high new coming out from Plopper immediately gets denied there by Unicorn. The Cassini Rush coming out a little bit too late there from White Boy. Holy Cross finishes this map with a healthy time bank of 156. Yeah, and now. Uh, we kind of see what this attack could give them. It gives them a lot of momentum, and it also lets them know what Vermillion was trying to come into this map with. Generally, a team is not going to have vastly different strategies on the defense and attacking side. Uh, on most maps, I think that is the case. I think there's very few situations in which it is like the opposite. We're like, okay, our defense is going to be really has like a completely different set of heroes than our offense so they know what they're going up against i wonder if they're sticking to their ball comp i think it works fine on the defense as well a little bit slower a little bit less of um a little bit less of kind of like just like full-on pressuring them but kind of like okay you want to walk into this we'll walk into this damage like you're walking into this fair uh these fair just raining down uh, missiles and you're walking into this ball that can slam you on a rotate but they have decided that no, they are going to make a completely different swap up here to kind of trick Vermilion. And they're going to have a Torbjorn in a May with that Zarya and Baptiste. So it's going to be kind of a pseudo rush uh, in terms of there's just no Ryan. Yeah, like I, I was honestly kind of surprised there at the start. Like, you know, they almost have it set up for the traditional brawl, like, lineup for this map but instead they make some swaps there late go to the zarya and the tor which is interesting vermilion coming out with the orissa first time we're seeing that uh character knight same thing with plopper on the bastion first time we're seeing them as well the bastion definitely super efficient into a um into a wrecking ball but it's not a wrecking ball anymore it is going to be that zarya as uh, they're gonna be able to beam down the orissa and i think zarya uh, orissa when they had their most prominence in season two for a very long time, right, where they were kind of dominant, uh, people were kind of like, okay, maybe we can start playing Zarya into Orisa. Like, Zarya's making their comeback after their kind of reign in season one. They kind of fell off a bunch, and then in season two, it was like, okay, maybe we can start running it into Orisa. It's kind of a counter. You can just beam it the entire time. The javelin spin doesn't stop you, and you can kind of have so much damage output that their fortify extra HP isn't actually a threat. No swaps going on here from Vermillion to start off this second team fight here. The turret taken out there from the Holy Cross right now. Silver Slush is trying to deal or get rid of as much damage as they possibly can. The spear there though comes out on the unicorn, so there'll be no turret up here for a little bit. Vermillion has to try to make the most of this. They're gonna walk through. However, we immediately see Silver Slush have to cool down that gun there. However, it's White Boy finding King with that nade and then finding moving three. Two more kills come out from Rifos who pops their uh grab their grab there. Only catching two though. White Boy continues to be just raining in damage on that Ana finds. Banana Rapos finds Iron Taco, though. And now Silver Slush with this Nano just desperately trying to take care of Rapos there. However, here comes the rest of Holy Cross coming back from the spawn. Silver Slush really on their own right now, trying to do their best to stay alive. Unicorn able to take him out with a nice headshot there from the Ribbit Gun. Yeah, and now we're going to see the Rikis has come in that bay. Going to just left click down the soldier. Does uh, plenty enough DPS. Uh, with just that freezing beam going out, which doesn't actually freeze anymore, I guess. Um, but yeah, definitely does a lot of damage. And right now, I think the Zoya definitely showing off why you want it. Got that grab super quickly and then pump out so much damage and trade. I think it was four kills on their side. Despite the rest of the team falling around them, they're self-sufficient enough with the bubbles and with the high charge that they can just do whatever they want. Oh, but here comes the Molten Core from Unicorn. Tire coming out from Yui here. Doesn't find anyone other than an Immortality Field. Rayfos comes right back and finds Iron Taco and Vermillion falling back right now off of that kill there. However, you see Rayfos just pressing that W key, wanting to bring problems and havoc to Vermillion. They find White Boy as well. Yui taken out 
as well. And now you finally start to see Vermillion just completely back up into their spawn. Plopper gonna try to run back, will be able to get back to the comfort of their own spawn. Minute 20 now left for Vermillion here. Holy Cross has been doing good so far in defense. And I think Rayfros might be lapping a lot of their teammates here with this Graviton Surge. They've done so much damage on the Zari. They've always had the high charge and they've always been able to bring down whoever they want in these fights. Gonna get that Graviton Surge. I don't think they were expecting this. And here comes the grab. It catches, I believe, four there. This could be huge for them. They find one, but here comes the Terra Surge out from Silver Slush. It finds one there. That might just be enough to keep up with the Blizzard coming out from moving three. Might just be enough to put Holy Cross back in front here. They find Plopper, but that's all they get from there. Silver Slush immediately goes after Banana there, but they might have gone a little bit too far away from their team. They take care of King. Now here comes the damage matrix from Banana. Silver Slush continues to just find members of this Holy Cross team. Moving three there. However, White Boy taken out by Rayfos, who's now back in this fight. Yui, 18 health, not much of a dream there as they're taking out Plopper the Fines, Banana right back. This has to be Vermillion's fight if they want to continue on this map. The Visor's coming out from Plopper here. It does provide a lot of space, but they need to be on the point right now. They're forgetting about it. Unicorn able to find Silver Slush there. Now they're finally back on the point. However, we do see Unicorn now on this Sombra. They're on the point instead. Yui able to find King. Moving three though, back in this fight, finds Plopper, and they're hacked now on point is Yui. Now into overtime for a million, trying to do the, the most, oh my god, you're right, they do have another grab here. Uh, and about to have an EMP as well, it finds two people. Iron Taco though, takes care of two members of Holy Cross here. Vermillion needs to win this fight. Here comes a tire from Yui. It needs to be huge here. They're looking for anyone, but King and Banana fall. The tire will just pretty much go to waste, but Vermillion will cap this first point. And Iron Taco, the Moira, in these scramble situations does so much in terms of just, uh, just raw damage output it has while also complementing with some occasional bursts of healing you have orbs that you can kind of supplement how do we, are we falling behind on health or are we just need extra damage to finish this one out the moira has that in spades and of course coalescence just in terms of how much raw healing and damage at the same time you can put out it does wonders for them as they are going to be swapping over to Popper onto the, the Widowmaker. I mean, to see if they can make this work in this enclosed space. Rainbow's looking for the grab though. Immediately finds it. Look at that three in it. The Blizzard also coming out from moving three. Make it two, three, four. They just have to get rid of this nanode centaur here of Silver Slush to get the team kill. It's going to take a little bit, but they're eventually able to do it for another team kill for Holy Cross. Another team kill. And now we're in this choke point. It's going to be really rough to get past it. It is generally one of the biggest stopping points in King's Row, is this upcoming archway. And with the May especially, the wall is just the perfect width to kind of cover this entire area, but the cart is actually going to block it because the uh, the wall, the cart will just break any wall that comes up below it. So that's at least a, a silver lining. Yeah, but Plopper already taken out of this one here. Unicorn just being a pest in that background. Here comes the damage picture from Banana. You just see Rapos firing those right clicks through there right now, trying to get as much damage as he can. Now look at this. Unicorn just is, at this point, kind of bullying Plopper there, who swapped over to the Reaper. 60 seconds left to go. Terror Surge ready for Silver Slush, but they are walled off. They're not going to use it there. Unicorn King already have their ultimates back, but the kills continue to go the way of the Crusaders here. Rafos going after Iron Taco. Now they have their eyes set on Yui. Moving three, though, able to take him out. 40 seconds left to go. Vermilion stuck in a really, really bad spot. Yeah, they are going to be stuck in such a rough spot walking into the EMP. That's the worst situation. Generally, an EMP is most effective if people are kind of walking into it, but they're just going to grab them on the rotate out of spawn. And look at that, the two people who are in that grab immediately taken out. Vermilion knows they have to pretty much hit the go button here. They can't wait for them to come back. Here comes the Blizzard now coming out here from moving three. The Terra Surge though, coming out from uh, Silver Stars has to be huge. Doesn't find anyone. Instead, the beat comes out from King to keep them all up. Four seconds left to go. High Noon now coming out here from Yui. Won't be able to find anyone, but Vermilion never got back to the cart in time. Holy Cross now sitting on series point. Yep, Holy Cross sitting on the series point and some revenge for their sister team. 
as now it is going to be kind of that swap up into the Zarya. I mean, just considering, I, I can't see the, like, the leaderboard or anything, but just considering how many Graviton surges I saw coming out of Rayfros on that defense, the damage output from that Zarya was immense. And that was kind of the reason why people thought, hey, even if Arissa is super strong, right, even before the nerf where they had even more Fortify HP that happened, they were like, we can still run the Zarya into it because it can free fire, it can just kind of, it's harder to bully out the Zarya than other tanks because you have those bubbles. And as well, when that when that Arisa ult happens, you have two bubbles that you can pop onto some allies where they can just kind of walk out for free because it gets rid of the slowing effect and they can kind of just saunter their way out. Um, and I mean, just the damage coming out for Rayfors was insane as we are going to be going on to Escort to see, can they finish this out 3-0 or is it going to be kind of a struggle back here for Vermilion? Yeah, but before we head to that third map, we're going to take a quick five-minute break here and then be back for that third map. So just stick around, everyone. We'll be right back here really soon.
All right, welcome back everyone from that little break we had there. Holy Cross Crusaders currently sitting on top 2-0 over the Oni Vermilion A team. Again, I am Dextron joined by Worse. Now, Worse, this has been a pretty just straightforward series so far for the Crusaders. Vermilion on the other hand, they've had some bright spots, but there's been a lot of negatives as well. Yeah, uh it's kind of just been for the most part, I would say all holy Crus uh, all holy crusaders and not really a lot of fight back in terms of different different like radically different new ideas maybe coming out to try and help stem things over uh, the bet biggest successes were like last minute scrambles with a moira on a point just trying to like just staggering everyone's staggering everything's in chaos and the moira comes out on top which is good like it's a good play but it's not gonna win you maps and it's not gonna win you a series so they are going to have to start making some critical changes as we are going to be heading into Junker Town. Definitely a lot different than maps we've seen previously. A lot more of a Sigma kind of dominated map, a lot of open sight lines. But I think the biggest thing that happens on Junker Town compared to some other escorts is from second point onward, Monkey actually becomes a very strong pick in terms of its ability to kind of engage on high ground, drop down off high ground, engage a backline, and jump back up safely. Um, Whereas a lot of other escort maps, it's kind of just Sigma the entire way. I'm thinking Havana, I'm thinking Circuit, where you're not really swapping off Sigma a lot of the time. Whereas Juggertown, there's a very big case to swap him off on that third point, maybe even second. Yeah, and like you said, this is a map with long sightlines. We have seen uh, Plopper and I believe it was Unicorn for both these teams here come out on Widowmakers in the past. So I would not be surprised to see them do it here. However, it looks like Plopper uh, for Vermillion is going to be coming out on the Ash instead. A little bit more, I think, value coming out from that pick right there than the Widowmaker pick, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's kind of the question of like consistent value uh, with the Ash, a higher fire rate, a little bit mm -hmm. less one, like not one shotting, but you're still having a lot more like consistent damage come out. Dynamite is a crazy ability in terms of if you can get two members in it, you're doing insane amounts of like overall damage, charging up Bob, which did an extremely, extremely strong alt in Overwatch 2. But we are going to see if they're able to execute that plan because right now Holy Cross is kind of rolling out on this Zen Brig, which is a very backline, all focused around damage, and the Brig is kind of like, I can brawl with you, or I can just peel my Zen. But they're going with the Diva. Typically, you'd play this with a Wrecking Ball, but Junkertown first point, playing Wrecking Ball is a tough challenge. Yeah, and you know, this is uh, you know, a, di a different map, another different tank we're seeing coming out of here from Rafos. It's worked so far every time for them. I wouldn't be surprised to see if it works here again right now, but Unicorn already providing a lot of space for the team. Same with Rafos as Unicorn finds the first kill there onto Silver Slush. So no tank now for Vermilion, and you immediately see uh, Rafos there immediately dive in on Vermilion. However, it will be at the cost of their mech here, so Vermilion could come back in this fight if they're able to take care of Rafos here. You find the Zenyatta. That's a lot of their damage actually gone. Zenyatta will be putting up similar damage to the DPS in this composition because it's all about enabling them. And right there, you see the fight. Once Rayfos goes in, their backline doesn't actually have the ability to keep them sustained there. Gonna be swapping over the Ana to help just with that and allow it so that when they get that advantage off of those X, Rayfos can just jump in and just have a constant stream of heals behind them. Yeah, and you see Silver Slush here swapping off of the Sigma now, going to the D.Va themselves. Yui able to find King out early. That's a huge pick for Vermillion here. However, they do lose the mech there for Silver Slush. And now they just have to try their best here just to stall out this fight as long as they can. They're already up one with King falling early. Unicorn so close. They will eventually fall there to that Dynamite Bomb Plopper. But look at this. Rapos does have their bomb ready to go here. And here it comes. It could be here just going into a very open area and finds two yui put their wall down just a little bit too fast there silver sludge taken out as well not the way you want that to go for vermilion but what a start here for holy cross now and now the nano coming out onto rapos ploppers their first target they have their second target lined up it's ta it's iron taco they're out as well and now holy cross here should be able to push this cart the rest of the way yeah this should be this cap they do have the diva back they could end up trying to go for this touch. Rayfos is low, and here comes the bomb. 
Bomb and Blizzard coming out here from Vermillion. Silver Slush not able to get back into her mech there. Yui taken out as well. Vermillion investing a lot of ultimates into this fight. That's already a lost fight here for them right now. And you can see they are losing numbers. It's Iron Taco all by themselves, but it's a 1v5. And eventually, you're just going to lose that one there as Iron Taco finally falls there. Holy Cross gets the first point here. Four minutes to the time bank for them. Here comes the overclock. Very late, trying to find a stagger. They dive in. They're going to take a lot of damage with this, potentially. They are going to fall back right behind that Genji deflect, so they'll be just fine. Coming up, you did use that Nano from Banana onto Rayfos. I think every single Nano this game has gone onto Rayfos. They are definitely trying to play through um, their tank player. Nothing wrong with that, but they're not going to have for this Blade. And it could get shut down with the of headshots coming out from the Kiriko and the Ash, but the Nade and the Lone should end this fight. But here comes the Blade, already slicing and dicing their way through Vermillion. Here is Unicorn, finding two kills, making a third. Can they find a fourth just after it? They do see the D, the, yeah, the D mech come out there from Silver Slush. Unicorn able to take them out once they got out of that mech. So, so um, Unicorn doing a lot of damage there. And this might be second point capped already here for Holy Cross. Yeah, we're gonna see Plopper have the Bob. Are they gonna try and touch this? There's no way to get this ball on the point. Looks like they're just posturing for an early aggressive defense onto this. Kiriko already having to use cleanse. That is a major cooldown now gone. And Silver is gonna take a lot of damage for this. They're gonna have to be really careful with how they use the cooldowns now, but the DM not gonna save you from that Sojourn name. However, Yui does find Unicorn to kind of even everything out here. Rifo, so still just on absolute tear here, finds Plopper out. They do have that bomb ready to go. They've been holding onto it for a little bit here. I wouldn't be surprised if they use it here soon. Moving three takes care of Yui there with that railgun shot. The DMAC now coming out on the Silver Slush. Moving three, uh, a dead eye with that railgun right now. Two straight kills coming out for them there. Rifo's having to run back here to get some health. Still holding on to that bomb. However, Holy Cross has three ultimates ready to go here. Vermilion about to have four. Nano back up. Nano overclock is actually a really strong combo. It kind of just start, start one-shotting with body shots, but they are going to go throw that on to the Genji. Double bombs coming out and everything going the way of a Holy Cross here. Three straight kills. Here comes the overclock, and that's the entirety of Vermillion out of this one. It's a team kill, and it will end this round on Junker Town. Yep, that it will. There goes this round. Is I mean, Holy Cross look like they're in complete control. They did have a swamp up on their defense last time in terms of the composition that they, they were running. So there might be the same thing here. And I think Vermillion was kind of like, okay, we're just going to match the Diva with our Diva. And I don't think that really worked out for them. I do kind of like what Holy Cross is doing more where they're playing just kind of their game. And Vermillion's kind of like trying to play into it, which you just can't do when you're this far behind. You kind of have to have your own style, your own stuff. You can't just mirror and hope things go well because they're definitely going to be more practiced on it than you. So. Yeah, uh, it'll be now, interesting to see what Vermillion tries to do, but I think Holy Cross Crusaders have just... Uh, they, they, are, they are very much ahead in this game. Yeah, but you never know. I mean, backs are against the wall for Vermillion right now. They might play a little bit differently here, and it might just catch Holy Cross off guard here. But, you know, like you've been saying... Holy Cross just looks to be an entirely different league right now. They're 3-0 for a reason here, and looks like they want to get some revenge for their sister or brother team from last week. It is going to be a very similar comp on their defense, swapping the Brig out for the Lucio, opting for a little bit more speed, a little bit more aggression if they can. And going for the Sombra Ash themselves. So they want a little bit more of that consistent long range pressure from the Ash, but also a Sombra to shut down people and go for flank damage and potentially some flank kills as well. But I don't know. It, it'll be tough to see. This Orisa is definitely going to be kind of uh, out in the open and kind of just a moving a moving target for this, uh, for this Ash to kind of just get a bunch of ult charge off and farm a bomb. Yeah, and you immediately see Unicorn picking up right where they left off from King's Row in the back line, just hacking whoever they can and trying to melt down White Boy there. However, it's Plopper. Then Silver Slush falls right after that. Rafos just picking up right where they left off from last round. Just absolutely being a menace right now to this Vermillion side. Yui trying to do their best here. Iron Taco falls, so they really only have that ice block to keep them supported here and alive. However, you do see White Boy now getting some shots in. Plopper gets hacked here by Unicorn. Again, just sitting in that back line, just hacking whoever they can. 
trying to find the Lucio, not going to end up finding that one advantage they could possibly find. And the Nano has been foamed up because of Rayfos' ability to just take so much damage. They are still going to have that Nano. And finally, someone shuts down the Unicorn, it will be Yui, and they actually Boostio here. It's a Boostio, but that Boostio is purpled at the moment. They need to get rid of them. Iron Taco able to. Now the bomb coming out here from... Rayfos does not find anyone, however, both supports are down now for the Crusaders. Vermillion needs to make use of this advantage they have right now. No healing up on the board right now for the Crusaders. They need to find another kill here. Almost getting moving three there. So close, but yet so far away. Moving three will be able to get that large health pack here to keep them sustained. And you finally see King get back into this fight. As we now have Silver Slush with the Arisa ult. They've nanoed it before. We'll see if they nano it again. They're going to have to help their D.Va, though. Rayfos is low. They're actually going to nano onto the Brigida. EMP coming out. I don't think that Nana was meant for Brigida. Three people already coming out there from Vermilion. And the Terror Surge being invested here by Silver Slush. I don't think they find anyone with that right there. Yui can try their best, but yet it will just be another nice team play there from Holy Cross to stop that push from Vermilion. Yeah. They're now going to have to respond to this Bob. Bob, basically just a sixth man on the field, pumps out so much damage, is really not efficient to focus. Um, obviously, it can go down extremely fast, but like turning five players' attention to a Bob, not generally what you want to do. Plop with some nice shots, they're finding them some advantages. It's what they need to break open this first point. Yeah, and Plopper does have this... Uh, high noon radio. Here comes the nano out onto Rayfos. They have their bomb radio. The blizzard now coming out from Yui. They're gonna get the DMAC here out on to Rayfos. The EM or hack coming out here on the social bomb does not find anyone. Yui actually finds Rayfos before they get back in their mech. This is a good opportunity now for Vermilion, but losing Plopper might be a little bit bad for them. They had that high noon ready to go. They're not gonna be able to use it in this fight. However, Vermilion gonna push this card. The Crusader is gonna come back into this one. Maybe try to contest here. Banana finds White Boy on that on a duel. The dynamite comes out there on the car, catches a couple people right now. Rayfos out on the Doom Fist now. I didn't expect to see this character tonight, but yet we see him right now before our eyes. Three kills going the way of Holy Cross. Only one going the way of Vermilion. And this team fight is over. Yep, going Doom to get back fast. Probably best in the game for it. Ball has kind of a, um, a claim to it, but with that, like, cooldown on your grapple coming out of spawn, I think Doom is actually a little bit faster, but Rayfos gonna make it back, and now we're gonna try and see them respond to this uh, high noon and potentially nano coming up as uh, moving three has two members kind of focusing them down should be going down just a moment but the coach gone away is going to pull the way out moving three is so good at that I thought we would have seen this high noon already popped here getting rid of unicorn is probably the one thing I would be looking for right now but plopper able to find king they're able to do so much with this peacemaker revolver right now they're trying to get rid of banana they're able to here we need to see vermilion finds him the high noon comes out but unicorn come back into the fight takes them out so no high noon for vermilion and now vermilion needs to try to clean up some kills here however all the kills go in the way of holy cross here comes the meteor strike it's gonna get um, so much out of that mech, so much out of the fight as well, and that will be it. Holy Cross Crusaders get some payback on Vermilion for them beating their other team last week. They come back and sweep Vermilion 3-0 tonight. Yep, there it is, the 3-0 in response. Vermilion 3-0'd Holy Cross Purple. Holy Cross Crusaders say, not on our watch, you're not getting away with that for free. 3 0 them right on back, and have cemented themselves now 4-0 in this Northeastern Division. I mean, they are absolutely in control right now, as they look kind of, they look very flexible, right? They have a lot of different looks they're going for, they have a lot of different ideas they have, and that's, that's really nice to see. Yeah, you talk about them being flexible. Rayfos came out on a different tank almost every map there, and it just seemed like there was really nothing that Vermillion could do to stop them there. And if that's going to be how this season goes for the Crusaders, then, man, they're going to be a scary team to play week in and week out. Yeah, and now we have to kind of look towards the future for both these teams. One, moving down to one and two Vermillion. They're going to have to kind of make them make their way out of that middle of the pack right now. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to get some wins under their belt. Whereas uh, for Holy Cross, it's like, okay, can we keep the momentum up? Can we keep this up? We've already, we fought some close series. We've had three O's. We've had three ones. We've had three twos. How can we keep improving ourselves? How mm -hmm. can we keep iterating on what we're doing? And I think for them, I think it's actually like, I, I, it's good to have a lot of variety, but I think finding an identity would really mm -hmm. help them in terms of what do we want to focus on? 
obviously we can have our niche counter picks. We can have that kind of stuff. But I think really just to help you out is just have the central core idea of what we want to do generally for most maps that can support it. And then kind of just focus that down because that'll actually help you win against a lot of teams because they won't have an identity and you will. And if you're just more practice on it, you can come out on top. But for right now, they look like they have a little bit of everything. And that 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 alone is also good enough to win sometimes. Yeah, but you're right. Probably coming up with an identity is what they probably need to be working on now. Maybe tonight they were just testing out a lot of stuff because they felt like they had all the momentum, and it really did look like they had all the momentum through all three maps. And it just allowed them to have some fun, try some stuff out that maybe the other team wouldn't expect. The Doomfist coming out was a very interesting pick. You did bring it up that maybe it was just to get back there and touch cart. However, in the end there, they stuck on the Doomfist and got a lot of value on it. Rayfos never died on the Doomfist. Yeah, I mean, Doomfist... Does pretty well in the D.Va matchup, actually. D.Va doesn't have a lot to pressure him out, and he mm -hmm. can just punch him around and kind of just be like, it's kind of like Winston where it's like, he's just kind of like, you can't do anything to me, so I'm just going to bully you the entire time. That's what Doomfist is a lot of times. It's kind of like a bully. He's just like, I'm just going to put you in a corner, and you if you can't if you can't burst me down, if you don't have anything to deal with me, I'm just going to keep doing this over and over again. You can't do anything. But, I mean, hats off to Holy Cross Crusaders. They have done absolutely phenomenally tonight, but there's mm -hmm. still a lot more series tonight. Yeah, still two more series left tonight. The next one on this channel will be starting at 9 o'clock. I believe it is Florida Tech or Florida Polytechnic uh, versus, I'm trying to remember now without seeing it. Uh, I don't remember uh, who it is. Yeah, Montclair State uh, Red. Uh, so that should be a, a great matchup in the Challengers mm -hmm. Atlantic League for you all coming up in, uh, like you said, at 9 EST. Mm-hmm.
Welcome everybody, it's time again for the NECC. We're continuing here with match number two of the night. The Florida Polytechnic University versus the Montclair State University team. Lafon, we're ready and roaring. Let's do this. Yeah, and I mean, uh, exciting games here. Uh, I mean, on the one hand, right, there's a couple of interesting things to highlight. One is that uh, for one of our teams, a win here would mean that they actually get their first win of the season, which would be extremely exciting. So that's a, a super cool thing to be. For the other one, right, a win would put them at that 500, that 0.500 mark, right, uh, giving them a 50-50 win rate over the season, getting, putting them at 2-2. Two and two. So overall, a very important game here in term for both squads, right? It's not a, it's not a, a foregone conclusion as to who's going to win, uh, but definitely Definitely an opportunity to showcase uh, your talent here as we get set to get into the match itself. Yeah, and because we're already in week four of the season, it's really starting to get that point where you start have to getting those wins, even if you yeah. if you don't have any or if you don't have that many yet. Uh, if you want to solidify yourselves, improve towards the end of the season, you want to give yourself a little leeway. Uh, and if you've only uh, taken L's so far, then a W goes a long way of making that happen. Now, that being said, of course, we do have uh, Florida or FL Poly Esports and Montclair State Red ready and roaring to go. It's going to be a first of three match as usual. And it's yeah. going to be Overwatch 2, as we know. And I would love it. So let's take a look at these rosters. We have got, the, got both these teams lined up. See we've got to play with. Um, as we are starting here with Florida Poly Esports, it's going to be Qubit, Aero, Music, The Legend 27. Oh, the legendary name and Justice coming at you. A uh, very, of course, technical university. That's what the Polytechnic stands for. Uh, so they will definitely be ready to come up with some creative solutions, I'd say. The Legend 27. Now, that's an old... Uh... That's an old, that's an old reference within, uh, oh, within Overwatch uh, specific, but... Uh... Checks out. All right, let's take a look at their opposition, though, because you cannot have a game without two, and that is uh, Montclair State Red stepping up as the challenger in the challengers division here in this particular one. So, uh, I mean, as we get as we get set into it, a fairly young team here from Montclair State, right? Mostly freshman uh, players on this squad, and I think you know the expectation here for them is to continue building their uh, performance as they move forward. Again, as we highlighted, zero and three so far in the season, but it's been fairly competitive on their way through a couple of one and threes um in their last couple of games so it's not as if they've been shut out on these matches and now i think the, this is the the turning point this is the time in the season when teams start to have their turning point right where they start to move towards uh finding victory um after getting you know sort of the the early on stage uh uh shivers out if you will so heading into map number one looking for montclair state red here to step out extremely aggressively um because this is an important uh this is an important game for them to win uh and even even not even just a win but uh, showing showing uh showcasing um that evolution that we expect from teams at this stage of the season would also be uh, a big boon for them as they move forward and try and you know challenge towards uh taking down some of the the upcoming teams that they have facing off against them yeah for sure and you know that's that's the whole point of this particular game both these teams not the particularly solid record so far they really want that win but of course the team that's down own three might want it just a little bit more yeah. Uh, they can put themselves alongside uh, the other team. And then they're both on one and th one and three scoreline after this game. Of course, to get there, they do actually have to play some Overwatch. We can talk about it all the live long day. So let's see what map we're going to be starting with. We're going to start, of course, on Control, our favorite map type of all, since we've seen it a lot. Uh, because it's the first one. It's the last one. It's always the map you, uh, you get to play first. And uh, in tiebreakers, it's great. I love it. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, one one thing we've kind of noticed uh, in the last little bit, uh, the, other, the other thing to kind of highlight is the fact that compositionally, it's been an interesting evolution over the last little while. Even as we look at control, right, it tends to be very chaotic. So a lot of, uh, we've seen a lot of rush based around uh, sort of uh, Reinhardt, even a little bit of Ramatra um, in this patch. And of course, dive has been center stage at uh, on control. Um, due to the chaotic nature of engagements and so uh, i would not be surprised to see either of those two you know extremely disparate and yet uh extremely uh comfortable compositions on this starting map no exactly and because we're starting on sanctum which always has that danger of the environmental kills we will be seeing some shenanigans that play a little bit more into that there's a very good chance we see c4 for example come out of lucio uh, even Qubit on that Orisa will have some idea to potentially push someone uh, into the pits to find Sinyata's treasure or Mondata's treasure, depending on who you think it, who you think owns it or you owned it. 
As it started at the gate, it will definitely be a very varied lineup. The only real coherence here is that there's a Cassidy on either side. Of course, uh, this is going to be really difficult for Cubit to stay alive in, and there it is. The Maywall comes through, and then the AoE damage of Rhino to follow in, and they do a great job of dodging the Javelin spin to not be pushed off the map, and uh, on clear state red. Uh, a very aggressive start to this round will give them fight number one, will give them control, and I think also force Florida Polytechnic to switch their composition, have um, uh, realistically, Montclair State's Red's really good and close, and Lord Polly going to have to find a way to break down some of that damage dissipation that can be applied with the May. If you want to break it down, the Bastion's always a good way to go. The spam is out, the transformation is done, and now it's Montclair State's Red turn to go, because both the Nemesis Storm and the Bastion transformation are now depleted. It'll be a hard one to hold on to this objective if you want to keep going it, but a good anti nade comes out from Justice that completely disables Rhino. The C4 has come back though with a beautiful boop off the map goes the Legend 27. And that does mean it's a fairly even fight to continue this. Not that easy to stay alive though, and when you're Reinhardt gone, or we're Reinhardt not really gone, but now gone, there's gonna be a, a hard one to stick on that objective when the Ramatra is still rearing and kicking, and Cube is getting close to the ultimate as well, so it's gonna yeah, be another hard one to get past. Yeah, unfortunately for Montclair State Red is they allow the uh, they allow Florida Poly to get to the objective and they can't wall off anybody uh, and, and collapse on that. And that small window that you highlighted between the Nemesis form and the transformation of the Bastion was swiftly, you know, uh, that, that advantage was swiftly lost. And uh, Florida Poly, you know, rode that damage amp or that extreme damage throughput to burn down uh, the Reinhardt as we saw. Monk are going to have to start playing around uh, this Blizzard. Tr expect them to try and rush forward and use it as they find an individual player out. Don't even need it. The shadow's good enough and the wall uh, to block something off. Triple kill, quadruple kill comes in. That's the full team wipe. They did use a couple of other ultimates with that Blizzard. Unfortunately, is still in the bank. But, you know, FL Poly is going to be fine. They got five in the bank. Yeah, that's a very expensive fight for Montclair, right? It's three ultimates that they had to take that fight when Florida Poly used nothing. Now, I mean, uh, surviving the Blizzard is going to be critical at this stage of the game. Dodging it uh, would be a difference maker. If not, though, if they can dodge that, then they've got all the tools they need. Annihilation into the Nano Boots right through. Oh, they got uh, get full on in with the Nano Boost. It's a lot of damage, a lot of survivability for that Ramatra. The wall doing absolutely nothing. And with uh, three, well, only just those two ultimates, they just do a team wipe off their own. Got the, the point flip back, and now they still got three in the bank themselves. And not only did they use only two ultimates, they actually got c 4 sound barrier response, and Montclair seemed to be unwilling to invest heavily into that despite the sound barrier. Um, and now Florida Poly is so close to actually forcing the last fight. Sound barrier, uh, walking through a choke point into the Bastion ultimate is going to be really difficult. And of course, music with a overclock. Overclock, one of the deadliest... Uh, ultimates in the game, especially if you just spam fire the body shots with it. For an opening for that blizzard, it might be a long range one. They're gonna try and throw it in this little room, which is great because the Bastion's gonna get frozen before they get their ult off. No, they do still get Obliv. Unfortunately, the Legend 27 just in time with the ultimate to get an elimination out of it. There will be kills going back and forth though. For Matra of Cupid with the Nemesis form, obviously getting punch after punch, will be slowing down Mainless with the Vortex and uh, when all said and done. It's still going to be FL Poly Esports that gets the win here on the first point. Uh, that's, oh. a that's a really good setup by Florida Poly to deny the pressure that's coming in from Montclair State Red. And I'd like to highlight the fact that uh, the Legend 27 underneath in drop down in that uh, sort of uh, uh, room beside the objective sees the May running at them and still doesn't overcommit, uses the uh, ultimate to, the, the Bastion's ultimate to make sure they eliminate the main healing uh, from Unclear State Red. Um, and with the Batiste out of the uh, sort of uh, conversation, Florida Poly can sustain their way better than their opposition. So um, good heads up play despite being under extreme wow. duress. Wow. That'll give a first round over to Florida Poly fairly, uh, fairly easily. Nice and smooth rollout. The Symmetra is going to stay for music as well. Or it's already up. It's been tricky to get in there from Montclair State Red. They are still going to get there with the Maywolf. We'll find themselves a little bit of time to get the turrets out of the way. And now the engagement is going to be fully underway with that Symmetra being discharged. Rhino gets a double with the Fire Strike, though, and a charge afterwards. I mean, we talk about Rhino. This is not the contenders player Rhino, but it might as well be. 
just a really good setup. Uh, Reinhardt, obviously, with a 100 damage on the Fire Strike. That's back-to-back -back through uh, into the back line of Montclair State, or sorry, of Florida Poly, and Montclair State. Uh, ride that to a very easy victory. This is a now back-to-back -back rounds, where on first fight, Montclair decisive in their approach. Florida Poly gonna have to give up a ton of space and uh, reset as a result. For an opening here, already get the first elimination with that Ramatra Nemesis form. It's so deadly when you get up close, especially for that Lucio. Just punch, punch, and gone is the little frogman. And now, though, they're going to get into the objective. A couple little more eliminations to go, and they just push him in a corner. Nothing they can do on the side of Montclair State Red. And as easily as that first fight wins, as easily the second one goes for Holy Esports. Yeah, one initial pickoff and then an anti-nade to force Rhino back with a tank force to sort of play passively. Legend 27 walks around a corner, and Cubit and Bastion just combine for damage. Now, Cubit also has the uh, Annihilation. I expect this to be the first ultimate used in this fight. Montclair State Red need to slow the game down and try and play for a Blizzard here. Uh, might hold on to the Annihilation because they got a couple of ultimates online, but they're trying to get into this objective for now. The Blizzard's already out. They'll be on the very middle of the objective, and it does zone out with Holy Esports wants to do, but not quite enough. Almost gets a charge onto Justice. We'll cancel it and try to go for the Shatter. Ana on the ground will get fire struck, but that's about the only thing that will go down after another hammer swing. They will also find the Legend 27, but now it's just the Soldier and the Lucio versus the lonely, lonely Reinhardt. You can get dodged and ducked away. On Claire State Red, though, they get the respawns. This is an opportunity for them to try and turn this fight. No ultimates online aside from that sound barrier. Eventually, Maidless can throw it a high noon, but that's about it. It's the Annihilation is also here. Seafars loses the sound barrier to another punch. Cupid, relentless with those giant Ramatra arms. And almost it looked like a turnaround with Montclair State Red. They're going to walk away with a tail between their legs. I mean, uh, critically for Florida, probably they don't actually commit much, right? They actually have everything except the overclock at the ready. So this next fight is all more about order of operations than anything else. Uh, I mean, Annihilation is probably the opening game. They're not likely going to nano boost it. Not just yet, the wall's in the way. Khan, Deno Ramacha, when he's in front of it, will use the Annihilation to prolong their Nemesis form and keep on going. No Nano Boost needed, no Nano Boost possible. Justice already out and gets a double elimination when all in, in, the, in the far end. Monkler State Red, though, they got a fair few eliminations on their side. It's just Maidenless that will go down. Both supports against Qubit. 30 HP on the Ramacha. Will we finally get found by Oblift? That point will flip. There's a lot of casualties and a lot of quick re engage possible. I mean, Florida Poly are going to go for a fast reset, actually, as Cubit goes over to a Wrecking Ball. They want to just take this fight right here and now, expecting to win it all the way out. Ultimate's ready here. Maiden was looking for their Wrecking Ball, of course. Doesn't even need the Ult Charge. Just going to try and look for the eliminations now, potentially with the Sticky Nade. A very annoying ability to play against as a Wrecking Ball. Legend 27 was Nana Boost and didn't really get much with that other than disabling a couple of abilities for his shield. And Rhino, but Rhino doesn't need a shield. He's got a Maywall on the way. Shatter's almost there for that Rhino. Another beautiful anti nade from Justice, though. The Shatter does come out, will finally uh, lead to the death of the Legend 27. Maidless finds him with the High Noon. Now it's all pushed forward for Montclair State Red. They found one and they want all five. They're just going to get three. That's uh, going to be enough for now. I mean, this is going to be final fight, uh, actually, on this round. And Montclair State Red have the closeout utility. Uh, remind, remember, Florida Poly has to contest the objective, which is the domain of the May player. And with a Blizzard in tow, really all you have to do is wait for them to get on the objective, use it, and then take the remaining players out of the conversation. I was going to say, even Cuba's going to have a hard time going on to it, but he's got the minefield ready. That's a lot of area control also for Montclair State Red. And with that, they already find the double, including with the overclock. They're going to try and find a little bit more. May out of her ice block. Phil finds Zellos with a beautiful headshot as well. It's just click, click, click for the Sojourn of Music. I want to see them gun sync that. That would be beautiful. That'll be it. That'll be map yep. number one over to it's Florida Poly. And what looked like such a promising fight, Lafon turned around at the end. Unfortunately, the Blizzard was not as good as the Wrecking Ball play. Yeah, really. I mean, uh, Florida Poly, uh, I think, uh, clearly a recognizing that win condition established by their opponent is based on that uh, Blizzard. Um, and rather than over committing and trying to respond, um, just play outside the objective, right? They tag out just long enough and essentially nullified.
the May the entire game uh, long. So as we move into, you know, the next couple of maps, uh, it is going to be very interesting to see if uh, the May remains, if it's going to be this kind of Reinhardt brawl that continues to uh, be on uh, sort of on lock. And if so, can Florida Poly continue to remove this, the efficacy or minimize the efficacy of the uh, of what is essentially a game winning resource as well as they were able to in uh, in game number one. It's always a question. You never really know what's going to happen in these other maps, especially after control, which is always such a defining game type in terms of uh, the, the maps that it gives, the geometry that it gives, the play style that it sort of forces onto teams. Uh, so there is a very good chance that uh, we will see some other play styles. But it also, again, depends on the map. We've seen map diversity actually matter a lot in terms of what teams A prefer, but also what seems to work a little bit better. Um, so maybe the map choice and also the map bans will make a little bit of sense. Of course, we have the system here where losing the winning team gets to uh, ban a map in the next map type, and the other team gets to pick it, the team that just lost the map. So yeah. uh, we'll see exactly what we're going to get out of that as they make those choices. Yeah, it does allow for a uh, case if that you are if there's a map that specifically plays to a style that uh, doesn't work for you, then you can just kind of get rid of it early, which gives you an extra benefit for winning, right? So, um, in in general, uh, as we kind of look forward, I think one of the other things too to kind of highlight is that for for Florida Poly, despite them winning game number one, um, they weren't really required to showcase much in terms of flexibility, right? They were able to kind of run their one style all the way through. And so um, for both teams, there is a question of, do we have a, a different looks from, from these squads? Um, I mean, we saw Qubit on the Wrecking Ball, so there is some element of flexibility there, but um, uh, as well as the Orisa and a bit of Ramatra, so clearly willing to kind of shift around. But the rest of the composition didn't really change so much. So that is going to be an interesting or interesting thing to kind of notice if we, when we move into the, into the further maps, if they do change uh, compositionally. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, you're all ready for it to see some diversity. I know we are always ready to see some diversity, not just because it make things, it, the strings shake things up, but I always, I like seeing players' flexibility and teams' flexibility, not just the adaptation, but also the individual skill, uh, and sort of how they synergize with each other when they're on like completely different picks. Like there's so much to that and so much to that dynamic that, yeah, you can break down this one thing they do for four maps in a row, but it's always fun to see something change. Uh, it's going to be a ban on King's Row, though, Lafon. So no direct Reinhardt shenanigans that are sort of guaranteed. But Midtown, still possible, I guess. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is this is an interesting look, I think, into sort of the thought process of Florida Poly that they don't really want to kind of run uh, this this Rhine head-to-head -head mirror. So I like um, this ban on on king's row i think clearly your opponent has showcased that they want to run this right heart may even on nepal for as long as they did um mm -hmm. so to highlight to to ban king's row i think makes sense it also highlights a, a case for for florida poly that they're unlikely to take the full ryan mirror in this series i think we can expect to continue to see when they run brawl it is going to be based around orisa it's going to be based around ramatra um uh, and uh, the option, of course, it still exists for, for dive compositions, perhaps. But um, I think there is an element here where it's, can you pull away uh, from where your opponent's strengths clearly lies? That is uh, always the question so far in their spawn. It seems like that's going to be a no. We do have a, a bit of a roll swap at least happening, or a full roll swap. It's going to be a obliv now showing the Baptiste and Novri on the Lucio. So of course, the attack there might still swap. On the other side, though, it's going to be a uh, Qubit on, starting on the Sigma. Sigma very good in the current meta. I've seen it picked a lot. Pick rate was very high, even according to the Overwatch devs. So uh, we'll see how that's going to work out. I, I like the pick here personally. Five, four, but, uh, three, looks like it's going to be Montclair State Red, not changing one. up too much. Yeah, like I said, comfortability seems to be sort of their name of the game here for the Montclair squad. They can isolate Qubit with this May wall. They can actually get a ton of value. The first wall is going to go wide. Oh, uh, it's a big yeah. anti actually onto Rhino. You can't push in that nearly freely enough. And yet, even the, with that, the first elimination goes onto the Legend 27. Yeah, Legend 27 seems to be a little bit overconfident at times. We'll get punished for it. We'll also get res, but in the meantime, music will get picked up. There's another elimination, still numbers advantage, but another Bastion transformation out with the damage boost of the Mercy be very very annoying to get through but rhino had barely enough shield to work with and of course a beautiful lamppost 
to be a uh, looks like it looked like a team wipe was a uh, potential first point control already but qubit the ever surviving uh, tank will just keep living gets two eliminations to get a bit music coming back there's finally a team kill horn coming through though with a uh, little bit of luck a little bit of haste to that point will just get capped before anyone else can get back yeah euro gonna get off of the mercy now as they go to a bad tease i don't think there is even an attempt going to be a, a no. contest here. Yeah, it's going to just retreat to the high ground here. Our Florida Poly. One clear state red also, it has to be highlighted, actually get a lot of ult charge off that off that mm -hmm. fight. Um, sure. And it's not really mirrored in kind by the Florida Poly squad, right? It, the supports did not generate much in terms of healing, so Montclair squarely ahead in the ult game. Yeah. We do have Aero switching over to the Baptiste, of course, from the Mercy, so that has something to do with it. Music already taken out again, only uh, accruing a very small amount of full charge. We get Cupid down instantly, good shatter, early shatter again, because from Rhino, who is just a menace on this Reinhardt, and even the anti nades of Justice are not going to be able to save him this time around. Yeah, this, is a this is a really good setup here by, uh, by Montclair State Red. A confidence that... Perhaps was uh, eluding them a little bit in map number one. This has certainly been a different looking squad entirely on this second map. Playing with at the a, very uh, least, at the very least, somebody cleaning up their old uh, old usage. No uh, five ultimates for a team fight. That's only one shatter. They got four left. That they're gonna try and use them in this one as uh, Flora Poly is finally getting some of their own. Four in the bank themselves. That's going to be an easy lineup. The Nana Boost on the Legend 27, though, is very powerful, very damaging, but it's going to be Zealous Blizzard that makes them halt for a little bit. Beautiful High Noon to follow on the Qubit, and now they got the tank advantage. How much damage are you going to be able to do with the Reiner Shield in your way? And the Immortality Field blocking your line of sight. It's a beautiful amplification matrix, though. We'll get two already at the fadeaway rocket. And it's just Rhino alone with the Baptiste trying to heal them up. They're both going to go down. Music. Finally showing their true colors after being eliminated in fights so early, they finally had enough. That's a really good recovery from uh, Florida Poly because they also bring out the sound barrier there from Montclair State. So where that wasn't where there was an opportunity, I think, to you know reconvene uh, from Montclair with those with that ultimate uh, uh, advantage, it has kind of evaporated now. Florida Poly has equalized in kind, and uh, now keep an eye on Qubit. This Terra Surge. It's actually a lot more deadly these days than you may expect, especially with the counter that the shields can no longer block it. Yeah, very damaging, but you know what's also very powerful? It's another Rhino Shatter. Every single one of them just seems to find at least one and usually more than one elimination. Beautifully done again. Setup is good for Monster State, Claire State Red. There's the cursors that you were warning about. Does a lot of damage, pulls a lot of people in, but does not quite do enough to get any eliminations as a follow-up. They were close though. Nori almost going down will be able to survive as more and more players on uh, FL Poly are going to get pushed back as uh, they're finishing up this fight. The payload is going to reach the checkpoint and we're going into the third, into the train station. Grand, Grand Central is going to be occupied. Really scattered approach from the defense of Florida Poly. They have not been able to focus out any of their uh, opposition. Qubit Pushing over to a Ramatra here. Will escape, keep themselves alive, so no stagger now. But Montclair State Red with a very, very hefty time bank. Three and a half really, minutes really here. Three and a half. So it's going to be great. They might need all the time in the, uh, that they can get, so they might be happy about it. Uh, but they got plenty of tools to work with, and uh, Florida Poly not really looking at that much of their own. The High Moon's already gone from Maybelus, finds the Legend 27. No resurrection anymore since point one, so that's not going to be useful. A lot of push through with that punch, though. It gets a lot of, uh, of penetration with that one, but unfortunately, it's not going to lead to any elimination aside from Oblev. Sound barrier will, will make take care of that, and with only a few resources uh, invested, still three ultimates left for Montclair State. They might just finish it out right here. It's going to be the attempt to touch the point for music on the Ash. We'll just get pushed away. He has the Bob ready, though. We'll be able to push a little bit. Bob is not on the cart. They have to find a little bit more room to get the last few players away from this objective, as they do consistently take out the Legend 27 early in these fights. The Bastion cannot keep roaming and doing damage. They find the, the, the Romatra, they find the Mercy. Music and then it's Justice, the lone Lucio to protect the point and the wall block of Legend 27. That's completion with 231 on the clock, Fawn.
really well done by Montclair State Red Nori. I think one of the biggest factors in that actually committing the sound barrier when they had lost their Batiste um, in the fight, recognizing that it was a fight that they're winning, they needed that tempo play and committing uh, an, an ultimate in, in a situation when you're down one can be a scary thing to do, right? It takes a lot of confidence for your team to do it, but Montclair State Red clearly in, uh, in line with their rest of the team think it's a winnable fight and are proved absolutely correct. So um, Montclair State Red, I have to highlight, this is a very different looking team than map number one. What an impressive turnaround in the span of, I don't know, less than a minute into this map. Two and a half minutes. It's a uh, very, very solid time bank to work with. And uh, this team, led by that legendary Reinhardt Rhino, already working their way all the way through the enemy team with uh, not really a lot of problems. Get a lot of, sure, they got enough support for it. It's a uh, very, very solid engage speed that they're uh, able to do. Like you said, the speed boosts have been on point as well, the coordination around those. I think the bigger, uh, the, the most impressive adaptation from map one to map two is that they're getting Rhino into position to actually swing away at the tank, right? Uh, and yeah. uh, the same cannot be said for Florida Poly. Cuban is often caught out on an island, isolated, uh, with no one to support them. So, going to have to be an adaptation here from Florida Poly uh, to sort of give more resources to their front line to be able to duel uh, a, a squad that is uh, providing a lot of uh, support to Rhino. Uh, who else to kite the Reinhardt than the Kiriko Lucio duo with the teleporters and the Reaper? But unfortunately, a charge will still get you music. That's not going to be a fun one. Nice freeze attempt here onto Cupid. Of course, just a slow for now. Legend will find Maidenless. There's a little bit less pushing power on the defense side of Montclair State Red, but they're still getting pushed back. And with all that focus on the Reinhardt, the rest of the team can just do their work. The support is there. Mantra will fall. We'll find Oblif. It's not going to be enough to charge to try and find something here. Might be a little bit far right now. You got to be careful. There's turrets behind you, 44 HP, and they can just speed into you. But somehow, some way, Rhino's the one that lives. It's going to be Nori going down. There is finally the attack on the Reinhardt. And what started as a potential chase down of uh, lost targets might indeed have been a little bit too much. Point A under pressure here. Uh, Obla being the one that gets eliminated on Montclair State Reds come back, comes back to haunt them in that state. Uh, Rhino, an ill-advised charge at that stage of the game. There is no main healer there, right? The healing throughput simply doesn't exist. Oh, they're going to re-engage. Oh, they didn't quite get onto the objective in time. They do find justice, so there is an opportunity to take a fight here and start holding this choke point. Something that uh, Florida Poly was not able to do. There's going to be a little bit of a poke for here. I mean, Rhino can open up the second phase, second point in the same way they did the first part. Uh, the shatter, shatter here. Time. Yeah. There we go. That's a double. Music will fall. Use Justice will speed away. They do find Oblif in the meantime, but it's just more value out of the front line of Montclair State Red. That being said, though, there's the Annihilation. Gets a double, and it's uh, Zelvos that Zelos V that is able to walk away from it. The No More Annihilation Circle for you. Still, a uh, Nemesis form does a lot of damage, but Justice under fire from Rhino. This keeps going back and forth, and these are very, very chaotic and sloppy fights. Yeah, unfortunately for Rhino, though, uh, the spawn for Florida Poly just a little bit closer. So uh, the, the team, the team, uh, the Florida Poly squad comes back in to avenge their fallen brethren and will now head to uh, the Midtown Tunnel. So significant progress being earned here. Look at that difference between Rhino and Cupid. Cubit, they both used their ults in that fight. Rhino's almost got another one. He's going to have one this fight. That's a beautiful blizzard to set it up. No wall to walk away forward. They can only go back. Uh, they're going to get Cubit, most likely. Maybe one or two more. No, it's a good Symmetra wall to block it off. There is the Death Blossom from the Legend 27. Won't find anything, but at least will keep themselves out of harm's way for a little bit. And there's indeed that Shatter they already charged up. Unfortunately, a little too tall to go through that tunnel when there's a cart in the way, Rhino. But you will still find a team kill. Yes, uh, it was Cubit that died a little bit too soon to make the horn sound. But we all know you got it. Critically, Nori does not use the sound barrier in that fight, right? Having this sustain is going to be tremendous for Montclair State Red. And I expect them to... Uh, anytime, you know, a fight perhaps starts to go a little bit south, we'll return fire with the sound barrier, allowing them to sustain through. I mean, the biggest thing now is going to be the Kitsune Rush. How do you find value out of it, Montclair State Red? But honestly, just wait this one out. I don't know that you want to challenge the fight right now. Wait for this to kind of evaporate and then return to the fight. 
Yeah, music wants to go bra, but I don't think they're gonna give him the opportunity. Unfortunately, music finally does transform and will find a little bit of damage here and there. Eventually gets Nori on the ground, and there we go. That's a triple kill. They stop the card barely before it uh, touches the objective, but when the team kill comes through, it will still get there. Four minutes on the clock, Lafon. Even more than uh, Florida Poly had. Yeah, a little bit of an unfortunate timing there. Credit to the uh, music, though. Identifying the, uh, the Lucio as the one to focus down. Keep in mind, that sustain is only useful if the Lucio is not being focused, because using the sound barrier when you're taking damage is an easy way to lose the sound barrier. Oh, that happened before. Music under a lot of pressure, though. Almost going down instantly in that fight. Very good at focusing down the uh, Bastion as Monclerc State Red at this stage. Justice tries to uh, get their team out, but they can't get away from a Blizzard and a Shatter. Maybe an overcommit on that combo, but at least they get the full team wipe in less than a second. I mean, if you're Florida Paul, you're happy with that fight because you'd already lost Justice at the start of it. Um, and Montclair reply with an Earth Shatter and the Blizzard. Um, and now, I mean, the Annihilation realistically has is going to force the sound barrier here from Nori. Then you have a sound barrier of your own into a Death Blossom from the Legend 27. You're feeling pretty confident about this upcoming sort of situation here if you're Florida Ball. Yeah, already the initiation with the Demis Storm. There's the Annihilation to follow it up. It's a good sound barrier. Also a good immortality field. There's a good bit of pressure on the Qubit, so you can't really continue that. But there is a combo with the Death Blossom. Gets the quad, the quintuple kill. Almost got the ace cube. We just had to steal that little tick on the maiden list. But that's a full team wipe with no issues whatsoever. You're a bastard old to stop them in the spawn. Gets one immortality field, but nothing else. I'll look for a couple more shots. They're not going to get anything. They have to touch the objective here. They will be able to do so with the May. And Rhino's there as well. Maiden list finds one with the high noon. But that's about it. Looks like that's going to be a team wipe once again. And with two minutes on the clock, so does Florida Poly Esports finish. A little slower than Monkner State Red, but 12 seconds is barely anything. That is not a significant difference in the grand scheme of things. And Florida Poly, I mean, under pressure, that third point is just drawn to perfection by the offense. Um, I mean, almost exactly as I highlighted it, the play went through, right? Mirror, use the Annihilation to force the sound barrier, use yours to sustain, and then the, de the, the Death Blossom gets all the kills at the end. It's a, It's a pretty, pretty play and uh, executed uh, perfectly by Florida Poly. Yeah, it's a uh, Florida Poly uh, looking to get another attack out. Last time around, they took a little bit of time to capture point A. It wasn't as clean as Montclair State Red's attempt uh, at, at A was, but they got the job done in a fairly quick pace as well. So let's see if they can improve on that. Both teams definitely need to work a little bit on their defense. We'll see if Montclair State Red can uh, resist the call to chase down uh, right. isolated players as they, as it cost them somewhat uh, in that first defense. I was gonna say, it, it, it kind of felt like they were they lost the point rather than uh, Florida Poly winning it, right? A little for bit, the first, I think for the, for the A point, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Wow. Second and third, Florida Poly really had a game plan that was, uh, of course, executed to they perfection. Some, they got some momentum out of that. Montclair State Red, though. They're going to have a second chance at this. Nothing changes in terms of composition here. Although, oh, Maiden List of the Soldier is a slight adaptation. I want to get out of trouble a little bit quicker. Relocate a little bit more. Probably going to Zealous V under pressure. Nori goes down, and that's a charge going out there from uh, Rhino. I don't know, actually. I think they charge a bit out of there. Uh, makes sense. The will of the might have been Legend 27. Who knows? Legend 27 will fall on the Reapers. Not really much that matters about it now, but Cubit so accurate with these punches gets one music finds Rhino. That looks to be point A broken open once again. Not in the same way as last time. A little bit more convincing, but still in the break open nonetheless. There is gonna be some recontest, some time being wasted here on the side of Florida Poly Esports. They're still gonna be able to get there. I mean, uh, the one thing to, speaking of is you cannot you cannot go down in this main choke point if you're if you're Montclair State Red. Um, this next fight is going to be of critical importance, right? Uh, for the offense, winning it puts the uh, the defense into overtime spawns, which means that you'll likely capture the second point. Um, for Montclair State Red, they can actually end the game, the offense right here with a well timed earth shatter, uh, a fight winning a round winning piece of utility if you play your cards right here for Ryan. 
Yeah, they do have to hold on to it for long enough so that it matters. The Annihilation is out. They do stop it with the Blizzard and the Shatter once again. There's still 30 seconds on the clock, Lafon. They pulled the trigger too soon. That is way too early of an ultimate commitment from Montclair State Red. And Florida Poly, I mean, it's it not... Commits. It's not... It's not uh, uh, you know, uh, perfect for them either, right? Justice actually uses the sound barrier, attempts to do so, and does not get value out of it. Florida Poly still have to be a lot more careful on the on the close end here, especially with the F Matrix that's coming up from uh, Oblivion. Oh, well, those fire strikes are so good from Rhino. Finds one again. Nice fast ult to come out. Though, actually, find Nori. No more sound barrier this fight from Montclair State Red that might actually decide this fight already. As the Legend 27 pushes them in a corner and together with Cubit, and that's a wipe on Montclair State Red. I mean, Soldier's running away, but what's he gonna do in his own mate unless. Oh, you're teamless. That is a very good hunt down from Florida Poly. Absolutely no mercy shown there. And uh, with the overtime spawns, as long as they are, this is gonna mean that Mainless is gonna spawn right as the cart is gonna be trying to, or they're gonna contest right as the cart is gonna get to this checkpoint. The engagement come through. Right now, almost ready with another shatter though. They gotta be careful that they don't get caught out by that. It's Florida Poly. Good sound barrier to sustain, and the entire team will not quite get Obliv out of trouble. Rhino looks through the area for that shatter, but they're walled off by their own team and will go down before they can even use it. Florida Poly, everything is falling apart for Montclair State, but everything is coming together for them. Now, there is a single opportunity here for Montclair State Red. This shatter, I mean, Rhino has been so good with them up to this point. Gonna have to have another big one, but they have to catch Justice critically because the sound barrier here will be enough to sustain all the way through. And if they don't get the eliminations off the Shatter, then the Annihilation will come in right after it. And Florida Poly can close this map out. Is looking for the angle. Gets a double onto the 7 and the Cupid. will get the charge up. The sound barrier protects everybody. Like you said, there's the Annihilation. They will get a trade off. But in the end, that tank ultimate is just too much for Matra in the way. We'll just wait for this May to come out of our ice block. Duration won't eat, will run out. So no more ultimate, but it does not even need it anymore. That's the, it looks like almost to be just another map completion here, Lafon. I mean, at this point, he's gonna stop him. Realistically, it's gonna be the blizzard, but the damage has already been done. Zealous yeah, not even out of spawn yet. They got another Bastion ult to block off some respawns. There goes music with the tune of the Bastion. We'll throw it out. Maidenless will fall. Rhino goes incredibly low. There's Nori on the object that goes down. The Blizzard is out. I don't even know where it went. I don't think it might have just been cancelled by the by the death, but even that would not have been enough against the overwhelming pressure for Florida Poly Esports as they complete the map of Midtown a second time. Overtime is a strange beast within Overwatch, and if you get caught, if you get caught uh, in a snowball, it is extremely damaging. Uh, Florida Poly basically would have required the only win condition that Montclair State Red had available to them uh, would have been an Earth Shatter that you know prevented that sound barrier from being activated, um, so that the follow up could come through. But because Justice played that uh, played away from from the AOE of of the uh, of the Reinhardt's uh, uh, effectiveness uh, kept the entire team alive and Florida Poly snowballed all the way into the full cap and I mean you're looking at that fight at the uh, at the gates of second right where the Earth Shatter and Blizzard were used in conjunction but just 20 seconds too early um, if that had been an overtime fight instead Montclair would have only had to have captured the first point instead they now have to complete the entire map a second time just to keep the series going. Yeah, I, the the series will still be going because they will only be two maps down. But the map, yeah, that will definitely uh, have to keep going if they complete the map again. And they have to, like you said, don't want to don't want to end up with a uh, two zero down after two maps. Montclair State Red with their attack, not choosing to change up anything. Maidenless back on the Cassidy. We saw them already on map one and a little bit of map two. They do uh, get to the objective quickly. No time to waste. The May is now there finally for the Legend 27. They do actually instantly wall off a couple of players, but it's kind of the entire team, so they didn't do much. Rizali Field will save a couple, but not enough to save the DPS and their Oblif as well. Unfortunately, that first attack is not going to lead to anything from Monkair State Red, and they look a little bit broken. I mean, keep in mind that for Florida Poly, all they have to do, they're okay playing as aggressively as they like because. 
they have so much buffer room to work with and they in overtime they only have to win one fight so by playing this aggressive setup they set montclair uh on, on the back foot um and it's essentially it's the mental game more than anything else here now for florida poly uh and uh, I, I mean montclair needs to find a pickoff here mainless a, a stray headshot would be a fantastic opening gambit here as the walls get around the fire truck here, get close to the objective, force a fight to the place where they want to go. And they do find the Legend 27 with the headshot from the Hanzo. That's at least a good opener. No more May for control, but it's going to be able to get stuck on the little bus stop over there. Gets taken out instantly by Music. Music finds another. And this Bastion that used to be the Legend 27 is now Music as being a menace in the back line of Florida Poly Esports at the moment. Another transform Rhino under pressure. Cannot do anything. The Annihilation to finish it off. And another team wipe will come through. In 35 seconds. I mean, you said they have to win one, one fight in overtime. But realistically, I just have to win one, one more fight. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Monkley are just a little too far from anything and keep in mind that this is now where panic starts to set in if you're the offense for montclair uh, even as they get a bunch of resources online here they have to win every fight from here on out and i foresee them overspending on this next fight just to get this first objective that's the first ultimate that's the second Seconds. there's the third yeah. They just all throw them out, try and find anything they can. They do find a double right there, but there's made the backline dodge 27. Looking for a little bit more. Might use their own blizzard. They are. They're going to commit to this. They want to try and get it. And with the Kitsune they rush, that's out. It's a lot of firepower coming out from that May. Why is this fast with those right clicks? Oh, Ramatra gets the finishing punch on the Zelos. And with the Bastion ult, that's going to be a Rhino falling. Overtime ticking down. Can anyone get there? The Trace is going to try. Maidenless won't even make it without a blink. Florida Poly Esports, it looked a little bit hairy after that first uh, defense they did, but no problem since. And they now sit at match point. This is going to be the Death Blossom on the third phase of Midtown. But yeah, just all the defensive utility evaporated. It's one of the easiest times to press Q there if you're, if you're uh, the Legend 27, right? So... Uh, tragically, tragically for for uh, Montclair State Red, I think they had a really good attack, um, and just the presence as a team uh, from Florida Poly was a little too strong through the rest of the map. But uh, um, difference wise, is not in the mechanics; it's in that sort of presence under pressure. Florida Poly just understand where they have to win and uh, don't panic, don't overcommit, and they uh, they take the victory on that map as a result. Yep, unfortunate for uh, for their opponents who are now down 0 and 2. Of course, they are already down 0 and 3 in the entire season, so they're really uh, looking for something, something to hold on to. But what can you hold on to else than those beautiful attacks that they had? Because they did have a couple of really good moments, and uh, as long as they don't drop the ball outside of those moments too much, they might actually have a chance to come back into this series. Of course, after two maps. Gotta take a little bit of time to tactic, a little bit of time to talk about it. So we're gonna throw to a very quick break before we start map three. Don't go anywhere for the conclusion of this series.
Welcome back. It is Florida Poly versus. Uh, oh, I keep forgetting the name. I'm sorry. It's a long Montclair name State Red. <laughs> Montclair State Red. It's it's yeah. something that just doesn't click in my head. It's fine either way. Florida Poly State is one double two zero up right now. They're on match point. They're about to take this series home unless Montclair State Red can take it away from them. It's escort next Lafon and uh, looking at their choices that they've done so far, might be going to a fairly open map again. Yeah, Shambhali gets banned and Juggertown gets selected here, which is interesting. Um, it's really, a, a, just thinking like in terms of like the compositions that have shown to this point, it's really yeah. outside the wheelhouse of the showcased compositions that have run, uh, Montclair, that is. Um, so I'm curious as to see if they're going to change up their composition, continue to run the May Reinhardt. Keep in mind, on the offense on Midtown, they showed a really strong setup, um, but we're not quite able to close down the defense as effectively. So um, I, I'm curious to see if that is an, a compositional change now at this stage, because Junkertown historically has been uh, a a you know a junk uh, a lot of a lot of shielding, a lot of uh, snipers, uh, and so very much curious if that's going to be the case or if they're going to stay with the tried and true yeah, let's see if they can change up the status quo for both teams really they both have been staring fairly stable in terms of what they've been doing um but yeah like you said it's going to be junker town i would love to see some sniper play we haven't seen it yet we did see a little bit of hanzo at the end of midtown just now uh hanzo of course also fairly popular is uh, a pseudo sniper as we like to call it Less about the A, more about the crosshair placement and the prediction. Because, uh, of course, you know, it's not hitscan. But, that being said, with uh, some hitscans being fairly buffed in this patch, you might not even need to see something like a Widowmaker. Cassidy and Ash can do a very good job of that themselves. Yeah. I mean, the Hanzo also, when you're when you're considering the head-to-head -head of the Hanzo, like the double sniper, um, Hanzo does two things, right? One... Um, is shield break. You often play with a Sigma, uh, and so the Storm Arrow is really good at putting pressure on the front line. And of course, I mean, the instant kill cross map is, is strong too. But the third thing it adds is the Sonic Arrow, right, as sort of a uh, uh, scouting tool to give your Widow more room to work with. That being said, we're not going to see that. Uh, Fall, uh, Florida Poly um, going to run essentially what they've been running all game. No real changes here, sticking with that brawl mostly. Uh, Montclair. This is a lot closer to a dive than anything we've seen from them yet today. I like seeing that Ana come back out from Justice as well. We've been having some uh, really good times on that uh, Ana with the anti-nades. But Montclair stayed. Yeah, they're trying something different. The Wrecking Ball's coming through. Already a nice roll from Rhino. Straight onto the Cassidy. There's Kiriko with the Suzu. Save. Not saved enough though. Rhino very accurate with those blasters. A really good dive there from Rhino actually just to isolate Legend 27, who has been want to overst overstay their welcome in a couple of these flank plays, and so it was definitely a good read on a punish. Now Montclair right back into the thick of things. That sleep dart goes wide. Roll. Doesn't quite hit anything. That anti nade will hit, but not uh, as anti just as a biotic friendly. Just under a lot of pressure though, cannot really get away. I don't know escape to and they knew the sleep dart was out. There is another pr more pressure onto music. No more bastard shenanigans for you right now. And then it's just Qubit to finish it off. Nice dodge onto the Aaron Qubit as well. Really sort of kiting that Ramatra. I'm just going to go over to the Torbjorn here. Um, the one thing to kind of note, actually, from Montclair, and I like this I like this read from them, is that Fortipoli can often get uh, caught in the chaos um, when, you know, uh, if we look at Midtown, right, where sometimes they just try, and, especially on the defense, to try and take a bunch of really awkward fights. Um, so going into this composition uh, of the of the wrecking ball, this high mobility one, kind of just plays into where your opponent's weaknesses lie. I really like this change. A lot of damage onto Rhino, but not quite enough. They set themselves up for a beautiful dragon strike that at least clears out the Rhino, the high ground, even picks up justice on that Lucio. They're gonna try and chase down Music on the Cassidy. Will get stuck onto Maidenless. That's not going to be enough to take down a Hanzo. You have to get some extra damage on them. 130 on the Magnetic Grenade. Not quite enough. Take down a 225 HP target. Right now, for another roll through. There's the... Well, Minefield in the tunnel. Why not? Ooh, nice little clean play there by the Wrecking Ball. I, Rhino is setting the tempo of this game. Um, and no one else is really playing... 
it, it, everything is kind of revolving around the Wrecking Ball at this stage, and Florida Poly has not been able to slow down the Wrecking Ball, and as a result, has not been able to slow down the uh, the game itself. Nice little headshot from Maidenless there. And Montclair, I mean, continue to showcase their prowess on the offensive side of the map. They get another, another checkpoint and enter into third with five and a half in a time bank. And that tempo, I mean, following Rhino, that was already the case when they were on the Reinhardt and now on the Wrecking Ball. It just goes a little bit faster as the Wrecking Ball just keeps rolling through. The engages are a lot cleaner with that pile drive. You bet, looking for a target with the Javelin, looking for a little bit more with their Pulse Cannon, but a beautiful Pulse Bomb will put them on the defensive, instant fortify, but they turn around onto Rhino. Rhino barely gets enough healing from that sound barrier, the overshield is just there, but the sound barrier will not be fully able to save them. In the meantime, though, the rest of Monclair State has been pressing forward. They got at least one elimination, but not going to get much more out of it, it seems, as they are getting pushed away, pushed back, and it's finally a fight win coming out from FL Poly Esports. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't actually use any uh, ultimate to do that either, so they're in a good position now to try and keep this one going. Keep in mind, Monclair had to sort of expend the bank to get to the stage. So, and the third point on, on Junker County is a very difficult point to take, but uh, Florida Poly losing a lot of space here. And they sure are, but not enough space <laughs> lost because the Molten Core just buys it all right back from the Torbjorn. They will lose a couple of members, and it does look like there's going to be some pressure here from Montclair State Reds to keep on pushing forward. Unfortunately for, for Qubit, they do need a little bit more support here as the Tracer just keeps zipping and zapping around. Finally, Zealous is caught. The respawns are coming back in. Florida Pulley has to uh, kind of retreat and regroup, and they're not doing so. That's because just Cubit. That's just going down. And that's even a pile drive onto the ash of music. Sure, there's a turret. That's fine. I mean, that's a, another good play by Rhino, right? With the activation timer um, uh, reduced on the minefield uh, uh, arming time, right? You put that up aggressively, uh, Justice can't escape. It also buy, uh, sections off Qubit from uh, from uh, Euro, and uh, essentially one minefield gets three kills. A really good setup there by the tank player. And Bob is out now. A lot of pressure on the Zealous V, especially. You cannot really poke their heads out in lieu of getting shot by the Bob. It's going to be a reset here from Uncle State Red, but started out decently is very quickly shut down by for the Poly Esports. So that's only two minutes taken off that time bank that uh, yep. Montclair walked in here with. So, and the payload is at that's the final, three, right? like the final corner, essentially, right? It's like ten meters away. It we yeah. Have a minor the, uh, yeah, Zealous is thinking about attempting a back cap. I think they actually should go for it, right? All the attention is drawn to the tank at the stage. Okay. Try and go for it. I hear the Terra Search going off. Doesn't quite find anything, but do find Maidenless in the follow up. Rhino, gonna go back to spawn to heal back up real quick. They might even switch uh, switch to a different hero. I don't think they're gonna. They could have. Look for a little bit of a target. They know the Tracer is there. The Tracer still got the Pulse Bomb Zealous on the hunt, on the prowl, on the move. A little bit of a hide and seek situation the, here. I mean, Custom makes music look behind them, which is a pretty big deal. And I don't think they've seen Zealous walk around. They might hear the footsteps, though. Uh, with the cart being Dude. moved forward, they now know that at least the Tracer is in the vicinity. Kong's Still not getting contested. Okay, just barely getting contested now. There we go. There we go. Rhino takes a lot of damage before they even can go in, though. And I'm waiting for Monclair State to make a move. Nice javelin onto Zelos. Almost able to hide in the corner once again. They didn't have quite enough help and blinks to get away from that one. Legend 27 will fall on the other side. So it is a trade. There's a dragon to push through. The pile drive almost gets them back into it, but they barely had enough time to walk out. The minefield is ready. He's going to try and block access to the card and roll a little bit further. And there's a lot of pressure on this Kiriko now from Aero. They know they don't have the Suzu left anymore. So it's just a uh, Wrecking Ball versus a Kiriko straight up. And uh, those Kunai don't do a lot of damage to the Wrecking Ball if he's involved for him. No headshots, no to fire for you there. It's only a 40 per Kunai. That's a lot of uh, eliminations going to the way of Montclair State Red as they're trying to finish out this map. One minute on the clock, the pulse pump goes wide. They have to keep this fight going. They have to find more eliminations, chain them together, make sure the respawns don't establish themselves into a full reset. And music finds Zelos. That's another tracer gone. You don't have to worry about, but they trade back two on the side, and it's a roll through from the wrecking ball. The terror search comes out with a sound barrier, barely blocks it. 
Qubit will fall and just a couple of members of uh, Florida Poly will be able to try and keep defending. The Tsunade Rush comes out, three members on incredibly low health, make that two, make that one. Only the Torbjorn, but there is a Bob. Once again, can they hold on another time with the big Omelette Butler? It doesn't look like that's going to be a case for long anyway this time around. Rhino on an absolute tear of this Wrecking Ball. They're trying to come back into it. This is his home playing ground, so that's what Cubit says. I'm going to be on the Wrecking Ball as well. Only 2.2 meters to go. They are determined to get this to at least to overtime before completion comes through. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Only a couple of seconds. There we go. 15 on the clock. That's a round completion. And once again, a map completion by Montclair State. I think you have to be impressed with the first half of the map by Montclair and have to be incredibly impressed with the uh, third point defense by Florida Poly because that is a, a that was a five minute, uh, 10 second uh, defense that they provided there on third. Keep in mind, it was 525 when the gates opened uh, of... Uh, uh, actually, no, it was more than that. It was 5.30 uh, as the gates opened up on third. So a very, very hefty defense by Florida Poly. And now this makes a very interesting look because Florida Poly will complete... Completing the map here means that if both teams will go to the offense part two, but Montclair would only get one fight, essentially, uh, uh, once they reapproach. So um, that defense could end up being a massive difference in this game. And... Uh, reminder, Florida Poly sitting at match point here. Uh, we're talking about Junkertown, though. That last point is always going to be tricky. And even though they have five minutes, they still end up with 15 seconds. I don't even want to guess what Florida is going to end up with if they even get to the third checkpoint. Of course, going to have to try and start their own attack first. Music hovering over that Sojourn at the moment, which for this map, that'll be your choice. Five, four, three, two, Rhino was an one, absolute menace in that... Is in the attacking half see if they That's can probably why that zen is there remind we'll see if they can uh you know repeat their uh process here off to a good start already actually yeah i mean i thought they're gonna see the zenyatta from iroh but they're gonna switch back to the here though but it makes sense to change the breakpoints a little bit on that wrecking ball trying to sweat a little bit longer but they do want that mobility to do with that suzu for more protection you do see the Wow, the instant slide into Maidenless Music finds that aggressive Sojourn play, and Nori goes down as well. There goes Obliv, and what started out as a good defense instantly gets turned around. Man, yeah, Music comes up tremendously there. Three eliminations on that round, or on that fight. Actually, three final blows in that fight. Uh, four eliminations, so really good stuff from the Sojourn. The real gun fights oh, all nice over sleep. against Sleep Dart onto Rhino. Cannot really roll in. Has a little bit more time to work. I think wait for the next gravel. Can someone uh, can test. Just, okay, they just barely get to the point. They, they can. They can. They had time. It's not another worry at all. You're a wrecking ball. You're speedy. No more Sleep Dart to worry about as well. There's the Antidate, though, and gets stopped, gets slowed, and that's just too much damage coming after the Soldier. And Rhino absolutely decimated there. Maidenless will find music in the end. But just getting the Soldier, and there's still the rest of the team left, but you finally deal with that oppressive hero. And Montclair State Red, what started out as a very good attack, is turning into Midtown once again. As uh, Florida Poly is getting their own speedy uh, attack going. I will say that uh, Montclair is going to have the minefield coming through here from Rhino shortly. And while on the offense, the minefield is quite strong. Defensively, it's even better. Um, being able to put the minefield where your opponent is forced to go just because of the payload means that uh, there's no real way for them to escape it. You can see Rhino's just waiting for it to come off cooldown. He's going to go over the top here with the pile driver. Out of a first, the minefield after. They will uh, find at least, they'll find the turrets, but everyone else will be able to hide away. And the rest of the team four is in. There is the finally the aggression out from Montclair State. Annihilation might turn the tables though as they do find two on the other side and everyone is running away from the Ramatra and they should be. The Ramatra very scary in the Nemesis form will find Maidenless eventually. And what turned into a very good start to the defense eventually gets turned back around on them. Annihilation there so big. You better leave some make sure that Oblis does not escape with their life. That's actually, a, again, another cheap fight for Florida Poly. Also, Montclair, by the way, I switched over to a Sombra. Um, and a soldier. And a soldier. 
I would I would like to see an aggressive setup here with the sound barrier and the uh, coalescence. Just go in fast here, dumping ultimates. Uh, good hacks coming out already there for a zealous on the solid round. You hear they haven't seen them play yet. Uglet will get taken out there. Goes Nori. Double elimination once again by Music taking out the support. And it almost feels like Music should have been playing the Sojourn the entire time, but they cannot be stopped except for my minefield. Very quick charge once again from Rhino, just charging ultimates left, right, and center. No matter what hero they're on, it's not going to be enough to keep this point alive. I say that there is a heck health pack to keep it alive for a little bit longer. Both Megas are hacked by the Sombra in this vicinity. Eventually, though, this point will flip over. Well, oh, four and a half minutes. I mean, similar ish time to Montclair State Red. A little bit less, but very close. I mean, for Montclair, the problem is that they don't have, unlike when Florida Poly were on the defense on third, um, they're not coming up to any really big uh, game winning resources fast enough to start this next fight, right? Like, sure, you have the sound barrier, you have the EMP coming up, but you're still 25% away from that one. So, and Florida Poly has the annihilation again, they have the uh, overclock. So, um, you have to wonder. Do you survive long enough for this EMP to actually be able to be committed? That's the question that lies here. Yeah, well, Zelos already has to translocate out, try and get back to safety. The hack on the Ramatra is intent to come through. Doesn't even need the Alation right now. There is a beautiful multi port in the way. It's uh, running a lot of damage and zoning to Montclair State Red, and they don't need anything else. The Translocator, you'll probably see the Translocator, right? They don't have to actually... Oh, they're just not going to destroy it and wait for the TP back. I don't think that's going to happen. Zealous is a little bit too smart for that one. I mean, Nano Annihilation. Uh, I don't think that the EMP yep. and the sound barrier are going to be enough to chew through this. I don't think so either. There's still a minefield and also a TAC visor coming up. So there is a lot of damage they can do to the rest of the team that's not their Matra. The EMP to start it off, they actually are the aggressors from Montclair State Red. They want to make sure they have a little bit more time to work with on this third point. They don't want to have it already capped. But there is indeed the Nano Annihilation and it is Annihilation time. Everyone runs away really quickly though, so they do actually have some space to work with. They gotta touch the point. They do indeed do that. Rhino is able to charge on us. Actually, the Moira that they managed to get there. But unfortunately, there's just too much damage, too much control, too much zoning coming out from Florida Poly. And once again, they set a very good time on their attack. A minute, two and a half minutes faster than Montclair State right there. And that's a uh, hard pill to swallow if you're Montclair State. Yeah, that is a tragic one to kind of be in for Montclair. And I, I will also highlight that it's kind of tough that their, I think their timing is a little awkward, right? Um, the, the, uh, the sound barrier gets denied again by Nori, but it's not really the Lucio's fault because by the point the sound barrier is activated, um, there's no way for the Lucio to actually stay alive with it. Montclair just takes an awkward fight into, um, in that third phase, right? They start with the EMP because they want to be the aggressors, but no one else is ready to go when that kind of activates. And so uh, Florida probably are able to survive long enough to return with their cooldowns. and. Um, I mean, now Montclair are in the unenviable position of having to win um, multiple fights with only a minute in the time bank, a third of what their opponent has been able to earn. Getting into it, I mean, one of the other changes that's been made that's been pretty tremendous has been the uh, Torbjorn, right? The turret has been able to do so much free damage on the flank that you've not been able to get in for free. That has actually been a huge problem. Montclair State Red, I mean, running out of time here for the last three seconds. As you do get a pause, Montclair State Red uh, onto uh, a disconnect, it looks like. 
it's unfortunate i mean they were uh, they were getting into engagement but yeah i mean this this it's it's such an uphill battle for them at the yeah. stage right and we're talking about a minute on a junker town attack and it's not just that you have a minute it's that you're on the other team is three and a half yeah uh, it's it's a very hard to come back one and we saw it on midtown already like after that that second completion that we got through even after that first completion that we got through uh from florida poly there's just this this change that you see happen within uh within their their team that feels a bit like they're off like their their mental is definitely uh, touched a little bit i mean it's a team that has a clear uh aggression on offense right they um and success it's not like they've 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 struggled on the offensive side of things i think they've actually been really good on the offense they've just struggled at times i think with that micro and keep in mind this is a very young team um uh, overall right again highlighting the fact that they're freshmen stepping into this into the server for the most part so um I, I think there's still a lot of time for this team to evolve and they clearly have the talent to do so we've seen great mechanical play from them and with the time banks they've been able to achieve on their offense um here today the other thing to note is that uh that if you if you sort of practice if you perfect um your approach and your consistency in fights and i think the one of the things for montclair that's been probably their biggest issue today is the fights they are taking sometimes just don't work um that comes with experience knowing when which fights to take which ones critically to avoid and so even the likelihood of them winning this game is fairly limited there is an opportunity for them to become i think a, a difference maker in the future yeah, there's a lot of room to grow, and a lot of these uh, what we call mistakes or unfortunate errors uh, are definitely things there that are I would say easy, but definitely simpler to fix because they're you know they're they're small things. Uh, they're things you can easily, easily point out, easily show, and things like this we see Rhino roll in and get this much control for their team. That's exactly what we like to see. They can kind of separate that back line from the front line and uh, manage to focus down the right target at the right time while Rhino is just keeping everyone else busy. Just as well on the Wrecking Balls they were doing on the Reinhardt. And why not on a map that's little, as open as this? Music doesn't get pushed back all the way, though. Let's get a little bit more room to work with as Montclair State Red was going awfully low, but does get healed back up. There goes Oblift. There goes Maidenless. Music on a tear once again. The overclock is way too hard to deal with. And even with a sound barrier, you're not going to stay alive long, especially with the molten core of lava under you. 87.39 meters where it's going to go. Also translated to almost, but not quite. Point a. I mean, that's a pretty decent progress to be gained on that on with that much time, right? Um, yep. And this is certainly winnable now, right? Like, this is not an unwinnable situation for Montclair State Red. Is it difficult? Yeah, absolutely. But keep in mind, they only have to win like three and a half, maybe four fights. Um, and if they can get control of the choke point that for, or that first corner, you can bleed a lot of time off on this map um, with control of that point. So certainly a doable situation here for uh, for montclair um and it's going to really revolve around i think slowing the game down which a good read that they found they're going to the may the, the may reinhardt composition this excels at taking fights and slowing them down so i think this is a really good read here for montclair state and shows that they have um an understanding of the macro of the game the, the sort of the the general setup um and give themselves the best chance of winning now, which close hold are they going to try? Because it looks like they're going for a close hold. I think they're just going to stand in front of the door and say, come and get us. You don't know we have a May. I'm just going to show you that I'm here. You're going to try and get me, and then half your team's going to get walled off. I mean, that is the strat, right? Yeah. It's the go. Quick fight win. Easy. Get some Moltres going. That's the Ramatra. Cubit. Yep, you're not going to live. Even your, even your nemesis form. That's not going to work, right? No, they are going to go down, but Nori gets antenated and will get fall on the other side to Legend 27. Once again, Justice with the quick antenates every single time. They do keep them in their spawn door because, of course, the Ramatra is gone. Zealous still there with the wall, which can still put them in a numbers advantage in every single fight. Legend 27 pulls up the Bastion instantly break down a wall as soon as it comes up but who's gonna step through that door <laughs> who's gonna dare no one is they are gonna go upstairs lafon this is a really good uh, rotation here um zealous it. can't obviously wall off the high ground <laughs> not from that angle at least they still, can it's not from still that angle. waiting oh obliv needs to care oh no 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 obliv once again peeks their head out a little bit too far for too long and now the numbers advantage is starting to dwindle from one player state red there goes maidenless once again music with the uh ooh, looking very good here on the sojourn just 
uh, I guess a lot out there. Still, I mean, the payload still has to move quite far. It's not, it's not like this is a, a, a done deal yet. Um, and as they move forward, I mean, can't they, they're going to be able to contest um, on on the objective here once more. And there's only two minutes left, so you know, two maybe three fights. A little bit more here. We uh, have Oblif trying to save their teammate who is anti once again. Justice for the win. Oblif is uh, trying to stay alive. You do find Glitch 27 and Justice on the other side. Does one player stay red? They find a third as well. Maidenless says, I've had enough. I'm going to go for this beautiful sojourn. I'm going to make it look even better than music did before. So far, they are coming out on top. They might have just found the key. Just play sojourn. Yeah, and I, and I mean, 90 seconds uh, left. Uh, two, you know, there's gonna be one fight that Montclair should have the real, a real chance of closing out here with this blizzard. Again, the earth shatter uh, is ready, and uh, survivability with the sound barrier. All they have to do is not overspend here, um, and then you can use the overclock. I, I would see the overclock through the window here, try and force out ultimates from Florida Poly, and then the final fight, use the earth shatter in the blizzard. Uh, right, is so good with them. Why wouldn't we wait for that one? Yes, the, uh, there is indeed the amplification matrix, but the annihilation comes through. Good sleep right onto Cubit to charge away on the Nanot Ramatra. It is just Rhino in a room with an angry Omnic. But it, Rhino's gonna be fine. There's no way Ramatra's gonna be able to do enough damage to them, right? No, the answer is indeed no. Maidenless will fall on the other side, but there is just too much control now with that tank still being alive on the side of uh, Montclair State. I think they're missing their supports though. That's not a lot, of, a lot of, that they can do to sustain this. And Rhino falling is just Zelos. Zelos has nothing in the tank. No wall, no block. And uh, this cart is getting awfully close. Ledge 27, there's a slide in, a sleeve guard onto Maidenless. You see a Bastion Hole come through as well. We'll only get the Immortality Field, but that's quite enough. The rest of the team will finish it off. And what started out as a very good effort for Monclair State Red, denying the Ramatra ult. Also denied Rhino a position in the fight. That's going to be the completion from Fuller of Poly and a very good attempt from Montclair State on all three maps. But unfortunately, Florida Poly found the key to the lock every single time. That was a very, very close final fight. The Euro a difference maker there um, as they put in the sheer healing to keep the uh, to keep music alive as we see them in the final highlight here. But uh, in, in the final moments, music with the overclock uh, was just kept up by the Kiriko. And uh, that was enough to keep the game uh, in favor of uh, of of uh, Florida Poly because uh, I mean that was close. Ten seconds, realistically, yeah. difference between that game and the uh, and and one more. So um, I mean, yeah, a, a team that has a lot of promise, but a team that uh, knows when to close it out ends up taking the victory instead. So congratulations to Florida Poly as they uh, win three zero here and critically. Move to two and two, so they have that 50% win rate on the season. Very well done. I will also say Maidenless coming on that Sojourn at the end, still showing they still got what it takes to play that hero. Uh, almost makes you wonder should they swap to it sooner, but that's something they're definitely going to talk about in their post game for next week. Uh, and that's it. They're going to have to come back next week for more games. We're not going to be back next week. Well, we are, but not yet because we still have another match to come later tonight. Uh, Lafon, we're going to have another challenge. This one coming at us. It's going to be the Pacific Frontier this time around. It's going to be GFU Esports Blue versus UH Horizon coming at us. But that will be in a little bit. We'll go anywhere. But uh, feel free to grab some snacks. We've got a little bit of time.
It's the final game of the night. It's still NECC Overwatch, Mana Class, and Lafon bringing you the action. This time we're going to the Challenger Pacific Frontier. Going off to George Fox University Blue versus the University of Houston Horizon. Lafon, I see one of these teams. I'm already impressed. They took changed all their battle tag names to start with GFU. I mean, that's some that's some dedication. That's some effort right there. And I mean, that dedication seems to have paid off earlier in the season as they are sitting at that 3-0 scoreline. And the way they got there is actually fairly dominant, only dropping one map uh, on their way there. So uh, clearly trying to play towards the top end of this division. Now, speaking of their opposition sitting at 2-1 for UH Horizon. So it's not going to be a one-sided game, I don't think. And I mean, it can really mean that anyone can take away uh, this victory. Still, um, you know, as we got said for the Challengers division, starting off in control, we start off with, you know, a very chaotic style. It's a chance for the teams to introduce themselves um, in terms of style, right? But speaking of introducing, let's take a look at the team rosters to get into the game itself ahead of that and uh, start off with uh, with GFU. Yeah, Hook Bait, Warrior or Sea Warrior even, Base, uh, Saucy, and Chaos coming in here. Uh, you know, it looked nice and nice mix of players. Uh, Obviously, they are undefeated right now. You see the battle, the, the tag indeed, the GFU. You know what the most interesting thing about the battle tag is to me, by the way, Lafon? Uh, you have what? to have only players where the original battle tag wasn't longer than a specific amount of characters, because otherwise you can't add the GFU. Uh, that number is nine, by the way. Yeah. Uh, battle, so... battle tags are, have a limit of 12 characters. Yes. Uh, yes. So with so three? Can... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know uh, I couldn't add it to mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the uh, a fairly uh, uh, collected mix, by the way, in terms of uh, yep. tenure uh, at the school, uh, mo a couple, uh, you know, three sophomores, two freshmen. So, uh, an interesting look in terms of how the team is building itself out. You know, uh, we talk about uh, preparation, uh, experience at times. I clearly, see that GFU has uh some elements of both the old and the new as it were and it's paying off for them but let's take a look at their opponent who they're playing up against uh horizon here in the challengers bracket and uh i mean this is a team towards the more senior side of uh, of collegiate yeah for sure sophomore seniors all around uh, they do have uh, a graduate student as well as a freshman on the bench that aren't playing at the moment uh, but Diego Owo, Vicious, Voron, Bean Ranger, and Yodel are going to be bringing you the action. At least to start with, you never know what substitutions might come through. And uh, we talked about a little bit before, of course, GFU Esports on the 3-0 uh, uh, record and UH Horizon on a 2-1. But the game that UH Horizon lost still was a 2-3 loss. So it was still very close against Sac State Gold. Uh, which means that, yeah, they're no stranger to close games, as well as uh, not having dropped an awful lot of maps other than those three. The other two play games they had were just uh, complete blowouts, uh, three O's. Yeah, and keep in mind, the teams have not matched up against anyone. Uh, they have not had any matches in common, right, or any yep. opposition in common. So um, getting a sense of uh, where they lie uh, here. Uh, um, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. We are going to start off on Lijiang Tower for map number one uh, for this set. And um, I think the, the you know, we've, we, we talk about this on broadcast a lot because it bears repeating when we don't have a lot of game tape um, on teams, right? Uh, building patterns is very difficult um, without information. However, control, and especially the Lijiang Tower, which is somewhat of a solved map, I would argue, in terms of how you approach fights, um, and sort of what compositions are expected to work on this and, and, and you know, sort of all of these uh, concepts together, it gives us an idea of how teams will end up playing through the later half of the series. So if a team plays extremely aggressively on, on control, um, you can sort of get a trend that they're going to play somewhat aggressively more through the series. Um, and then flaws that are exploited due to chaos will often be exacerbated later on. So uh, a good proving ground for map number one. Yeah, map number one, and the teams are ready, players are ready, we are ready. I mean, why would we wait? Let's just go into it. It's going to be uh, starting on here on Night Market, be the first round here on Lee Jung Tower. Uh, I'm curious if either of these teams will go to actually try out the Symmetra Strats. Uh, of course, the teleporter into the objective, straight to the uh, window of it. We've seen uh, a lot of times we see the mirror. Sometimes we see one team do it. Sometimes we see no teams do it. It's always a fun when it comes out. 
Well, we're going to well, we're just looking at that, uh, some of that at start, at least here from GFU. Well, I mean, a lot of teams, the, the one thing we've obviously seen the most, you know, the last year or so of Overwatch is that DPS will almost always switch to Symmetra for this first point, regardless of what they're actually playing, to tell or, or like for the first uh, moments of control across all just to teleport out of spawn. Um, now the question is, do they teleport out of spawn and switch, or are they going to try and do the teleport to objective strat? I would expect UH Horizon to stay on it, and um, especially because they're running the Orisa and the Reaper. They're going to go for a close quarters brawl. GFU, similar story. Both teams will appear appear on the objective head to head. Yeah, it's going to be the Reaper versus the uh, Soldier. You see who gets more value first off. It's going to be Saucy MP Ranger going down. Boron, though, got the charged up Symmetra Beam. And together with Diego, whoa, they just walk into it. That's uh, an instant team wipe coming out there for UH Horizon. Starting off strong. GFU going to make a switch now that Reinhardt going to be stepping down. Arisa in play, so it's going to be uh, near mirror, actually. Only difference being chaos in the sojourn. Uh, that means that UH Horizon is going to be stronger in close, though, right? In the in the in the close quarters brawl, um, where this team likes to operate, uh, you have to expect that UH Horizon is going to have just a little bit more damage throughput. Yeah, nice bail to grenade, but instant Suzu to counter it. The turrets are in the way. Saucy trying to eliminate them as vicious falls. It's going to be a little bit of a back and forth as to if Symmetra wall is already out. Of course, from Voron, it had such a gigantic beam advantage in the first one. We'll still keep going. That left click is just way too much at this stage. Doesn't even need to use the alternate fire, which is also pretty powerful. That's another fight win for UH Horizon. Is Goofin escaping Lucio? I think they'll get out. Yeah, they have enough health. It'll be fine, right? Right? Yeah, barely. It's a really good tempo play there by UH Horizon to keep the wall, uh, to, to, to have the wherewithal to use the wall that early, right? Oh, they're going to try again. Right, they're just going to bypass the point. I like it because they have the wall as well. They can use a little bit of risk, take a little bit of damage. It's nice antidote once again, but they don't even have to use the Suzu because, well, there's no one can really hit them after that Biota Grenade came in. Nice uh, focus down onto Vicious, and now it's up to UH Horizon to try and find a way back into the objective. Sleep Dart will go wide. Well, not really wide, just into a uh, fortified Orisa. That's not going to work against an Omnic that has shielded herself from everything. Uh, Diego will try to get some entrance into objective to potentially use the Terra Surge. We'll get it onto the Soldier. She just slides away. We'll not really find any other targets. Fully charged up. We'll not uh, make the finish. Diego will finally find some chaos, but that's about all they're going to find for now. It's still, the back and forth trades between these teams are insane, and so far, Yuji Horizon still seeming to hold on to this particular engagement. Saucy, the Symmetra versus the Orisa is always a good matchup because once that Symmetra is charged up, Orisa's got nothing to bring up against that. And finally, Saucy will find a random shot here on the Vicious. But it's uh, still control here for UH Horizon after that's all said and done. And is it really done for these teams with the respawns coming back in? Yeah, I, uh, you have to wait. I think they're going to want to wait for the full reset, though. GFU Esports weirdly don't fully commit to that fight despite having controlled the objective and forcing UH Horizon to use some pretty key ultimates. So they're going to have to worry about this wall now that Moron has at the ready. And I doubt the overclock gets oh. value. Doesn't even have to. Death Blossom already gets enough vicious in the face of, of the enemies. Yeah, it goes down, but they got already trip three, three kills out of it, and with 82% and counting, they get some late staggers that could basically secure the point already. They do still have the wall, they still have the Terra Surge, but GFU Esports gotten one more shot to get back into this. Uh, it's gonna be a really rough connect, contest, though. Uh, I mean, look at try and teleport into the point. So they'll at least get to the overtime. Hey, we saw that one before. That's a deja vu right there. But this time it's UH Horizon that has to walk back into the objective. They do a good job of that though. Chaos as well as, G uh, as base will go down. There's also Saucy, Warrior, and Hookbait. It's a full team wipe. They caught them with their pants down. That's UH Horizon taking point number one. GFU Esports Blue needs to protect their Lucio a little bit more. They need these sound barriers in these fights. and. It just wasn't used, right? That was a full round without uh, the ultimate being brought into play. And I mean, the difference between an ultimate that is never generated and an ultimate that is never used is basically zero. So, um, functionally, GFU Esports Blue needs to be able to, I think, uh, keep themselves contested in the middle of these fights. And UH Horizon, though, you have to give a lot of credit to them for playing as uh, aggressively as they did. Don't allow your opponent any chance to really breathe. Uh, and uh, play the game, you know, either they want to. So, uh, yeah, UH Horizon. 
Very confident setup from them. Very confident indeed in the GFU Esports Blue getting a uh, aggressive setup here. They're definitely taking the forward on this one. Chaos is now in the junk crowd. You see Yuji Rise instantly wants to not take that engagement into the hallway, but it's vicious. Once again, get behind the enemy team, gets the Chaos out of the way, and now there's no more Junker to worry about, but there is a lot of Symmetra turrets in the way. Both the is out of the fight. You don't see that all that often. And that's uh, a very chaotic engagement here in the small corridors up the server room of Lijiang Control Center. The Symmetra is both beaming away. Eventually, this looks to be UH Horizon's Koi Control. But that was not an easy one for either team. No, not at all. Um, UH Horizon, though, being in that first control is very important because the composition that both teams are running excels at being on the point, right? The, especially with the Symmetra turrets, slowing things down as you try and approach. Look how much damage teams get on the way through. Still, Chaos, some spam from downrange gets a lucky kill. And uh, it's, uh, it's, that's a lot of damage lost, too, from UH Rising because it's the Reaper out of the fight. Reaper looking to uh, come back ASAP, of course, but it might not be fast enough as we already see Diego will go down. The rest of the chase down is good. Teleporter is so much value getting out of that. This DFU Esports Blue. And Yuji Ryzen is going to have to go back to the drawing board to try and engage this. But uh, a very good solution, which does not get picked up early. I mean, I really like that play from uh, from Chaos, right? Uh, making sure to get those mines in a position where... Not necessarily, you know, aiming for anyone, but sort of putting the, the damage in an area where Yuji Ryzen are forced to take really awkward setups and uh, put themselves out of position one way or another. Get so much roll to open it up. A lot of spam damage that cannot, be cannot touch them, but they can inflict on their opponents. Yuji Ryzen... Chasing up the stairs, they might actually just jump straight through the uh, the top rope, go all the way up the platform. It'd be a really cool one to do. They don't quite have the death blossom ready, but Vicious is looking for it. Drop down onto the objective with the Symmetra wall of their own, and now they're in the driver's seat. They get to control where the damage comes from, where it goes. The Rip Tire gets absolutely nothing from Chaos, and there, there goes the trades. The first two eliminations, Base and Voron going down. Diego Wo will finally fall, but there's Vicious with the Death Blossom. Gets two together with Yodel. Eventually, it does look like it's going to be GFU Esports Blue that's going to keep control of the objective. UH Horizon had a really good engage there. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate, the timing for UH Horizon, but a lot of credit to GFU Esports Blue. Um, you know, that Death Blossom, perhaps it had the Nano, you survive uh, in, in the end of it, but GFU, they kite away, and critically, uh, Hookbait stays up. So with the tank on the objective, I mean, just a little bit more sustain for them. Now GFU Esports Blue, they have a sound barrier, and they have control of the objective close to, to the Kiriko Kitsune Rush. Very big change up though, Vicious and Foran switching over to the Cassidy and the Hunts. They'll already find Chaos with the Magnet Nade. A lot of damage on these two, three players that were sucked into the Terra Surge. They will all get cleaned up by uh, Hookbait and crew. They're looking for the last few targets. Again, you with Horizon able to flip that point mid fight. Give them a lot of extra time and another extra fight potential later on. Well, it will flip back though, and I don't know what Diego is doing. I think they're just, you know, wanting to uh, get eliminated as fast as possible. There is another fight here for the Ocean Horizon. This is going to be final fight though, right? And you have Kitsune Rush and an, uh, a Photon Barrier here from Saucy. So uh, damage up from the support and damage down from the shielding. We're going to try and prevent them from even getting the point to contest. Uh, there's already a little bit of a point contest going on though. I think Yodo and Diego got there. So that's a little bit of an easy one to deal with. Liz, Wrecking Ball, and Lucio. The Dutch split up the team and unfortunately... If you esports blue is very capable of taking care of one part and then taking care of the other part, just the wrecking ball to deal with, and it looks like this is going to be a one-one on Lijiang Tower. A couple more touches, but that should be it. Yeah, uh, indeed. And so now we head to Garden for the third and final phase. A bit of a foregone conclusion here. Yeah, in that in that final in that final zone, the fact that GFU Esports Blue has has those two big ultimates, it's tough to kind of come back from, right? And uh, GFU play it to perfection, you know, knowing that they have uh, the 99 mark, they're not afraid to step off the objective and give the point over. But more critically, they confirm the eliminations, even as they're down a player. The fact that they confirm eliminations is what allows them to win that. If they had been, uh, you know, unfocused and not, you know, fighting as a team. And maybe a player survives and with and they're able to stall out a little bit further um but uh uh running together as a squad and uh, it gives them uh, uh evens up the map one a piece one a piece as we go to the most 
Controversial of the three points with a giant ring of holographic fish pond around it. It is gardens. No uh, real environmental threats because both teams just go straight into the Symmetra onto the objective as they did on Night Market. This time around it's UH Horizon going straight up to take control of the objective. They've got the point and that does mean that the Symmetra is going to find a little bit more value for them. But I, as I say, that of course Warren will go down. Why would I not curse it? As Saucy finds the way around it, gets a one, yeah, they get two, just a Lucio in the way. And that's going to be point control for GFQ Esports Blue. Little highlight there is that Hookbait and Warrior both uh, play that to perfection to keep themselves uh, to keep the tank alive. Uh, Hookbait straight down the corner at like 50 HP, uh, gets the Fortify up in time to get the damage reduction, and then of course the healing is there in time. So if the Orisa had gone down, this could have been a very different fight, but instead UH Horizon are looking to try and reapproach. They're definitely not going to give up that easily. Still already a little bit of a flank maneuver coming out from Voron. They saw Saucy do it. They say I can do the same thing. Well, GFU Esports says no instantly. A double from Hookbait make it three almost. No, nope. that's going to be a teleport away from Kirko. Of course, the swift step is always online when you need it most. Not going to help them much, though. They'll point control from GFU Esports Blue as uh, Horizon has to come back into this. 40% on the clock. This is where GFU starts to try and really run away with the uh, with the map, right? 50% uh, markers are halfway there. I mean, now is where the critical resources come through. The photon barrier has been so effective. Um, the team with who has used it has basically won every fight. Uh, teleport engaged. The wall is instantly up. Pulse bomb goes wide as well on the chaos. Vicious is looking for something. We'll find the mega health pack at least. One HP. It almost didn't get away with that one. Now chaos with a lot of pressure. Vans just slide and Suzu away. And now it's UH Horizon that still has to engage from the front. Beautiful Symmetra wall is not going to stop anything because the shield does not block Terra Surge anymore from hook bait. And with 67, 77% on the counter at the moment UH Horizon is getting has to get desperate here I mean this is last fight and UH Horizon doesn't have much they have to get to the objective and then they have to actually find value while that is happening I mean the overclock from chaos is right there so you know you're you're walking into the points while the damage from this sojourn is sort of raining down at you now you can see Already happening. Vicious is able to touch down the tracers and so didn't have to worry about it too much. It's just Diego well, and Vicious on the objective at the moment. Yodel trying to support from range, but they can't even get an angle. They have to be so careful on that bridge. Just Yodel left on that Ana will be booped off the bridge just to put the icing on the cake. That's GFU Esports taking map number one. It looked a little bit struggly on the night marker, but afterwards got better and better. I mean, it felt like the round, the first round was a bit of a, a warm-up round for them in terms of the way they wanted to approach fights as a team, right? Uh, perhaps giving up a lot of uh, space that they didn't otherwise need to, but that is quickly resolved in the second and third phase of Li Zhang Tower, and it turns even into a 100-0 shutout on this uh, third round. So uh, impressive stuff from GFU. Expected, I should say, as they are, of course, sitting at that flawless record at this point in the season, but nonetheless... Uh, of a uh, highlight worthy performance on the on the third round in the map as a whole yeah it wasn't a complete shutout obviously it wasn't there was definitely some pushback coming out from hu horizon uh uh horizon sorry they did also win a point it yeah. like it was a complete uh stomp um uh, and both teams actually showing a little bit of creativity here and there especially around the symmetric teleports yeah. but in general just with positioning flanking they definitely made use of the space a lot uh, and that might be even, become even more interesting in the coming maps if both teams don't pay enough attention. Yeah, uh, clearly the Symmetra has been quite valuable for these teams. And I mean, you know, just look at the Photon Barrier as an ultimate, right? It's only once did the ultimate not convert on a fight win for the team that opens up with it, right? And a lot of that is because, you know, uh, we saw it in the highlight, uh, actually, the one fight where it didn't work. Um, yeah. It's because the terror surge had already been committed by the time the photon barrier had kind of gone down. So, you know, they were already in the process of losing the fight while it had been activated. And that's kind of a tough place to be in. Um, so overall, I mean, it just a, a much better setup from uh, uh, from the Symmetras. Uh, the damage that they've been doing with the turrets has been quite tremendous. Um, 
you need, I mean, look how quickly they're generating it. Uh, to dial yep. in though on, on GFU specifically though, you know, I called out the, the, the Lucio play or rather the setup of the Lucio play on the first round because they were, you know, electing not to commit to, to the sound barrier in a fight that they probably should have um, ended up losing it. You know, that gets resolved on round number two. You know, they're willing to commit to fights more frequently um, and that I think is more than anything is what really pushed uh, GFU over sort of the, the the hill on the second phase is that they were actually, you know, in those 50-50 engagements, they were taking the uh, the impetus and actually turning the fight on ahead and winning it outright as a result. Exactly. And uh, now that we're going to hybrid, we always talk about the chaos of control. Uh, it's going to be King's Row. Barry, Barry so is banned out. Uh, not necessarily surprising. It's not a yeah. map that everyone enjoys as much. Uh, but King's Row, that's also not very surprising. I mean, it's the staple. It's the one we almost always go to. Didn't do it last series, but they are back to it. Back to the old shenanigans, the old ways, as we call it. Uh, and that's going to be a very different map from uh, Legion Tower in some ways. But on the other hand, King's Row is also one of those maps that's been very much figured out. Yeah. And I mean, you know, considering that we opened up with Brawl on, on Li Zhang Tower, on all three stages too, right? There's no, yeah. there was no unique setup. There was a little bit of Wrecking Ball at the very end of the second phase, but that was a last ditch effort more than a, uh, uh, you know, intentional uh, compositional setup. So as we move to King's Row, I don't think we're going to see many changes in composition. I don't think the styles are really going to change. Um, and so we get to see, you know, does that mastery uh uh, continue does that mastery showcase itself on king's row because as you highlighted you know or uh, the, the 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 fact that we've understood how king's row is played means that both teams know where engagements are going to happen you know the, the expectations of fights have been set um, and now it's entirely down to execution so um you can if you feel like you have complete control complete understanding of your uh chosen style uh, you can really make other teams struggle um, if you, in fact, do have complete uh, understanding of the style. And so uh, the King's Row pick, I think, makes a lot of sense considering the fact that they like to have those, uh, the, the showcase that brawl style on map one, number one. Yep, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's King's Row. It's, uh, it's what everyone is seeing. I mean, you might see some tank swaps, might see some different DPS, different supports. Uh, but in the end, these teams were already playing a fairly brawly style of play anyways. What I really would love to see, because the Symmetrics were so popular, is the top hat strats. Just do it. Just have fun with it. I know Bastion isn't a stationary anymore, but that makes it all the more dangerous in my opinion. Yeah, and for, for a context for what that uh, sort of strategy is, is mentioned is that the... Uh team uh the attacking team teleports on top of the head of the mandata statue with a bastion uh and just sort of rains damage down uh onto the point uh of the players that are, are unfortunate enough to get caught in it for gfu though i mean no real surprises here maybe the junk crowd a little bit uh, unorthodox uh but a lot of damage i mean does a, and the trap can really you know punish a tank if they accidentally step into it um so yeah, the, the fact of the matter is King's Row, a brawl-centric map, we go to a brawl composition. Yeah, I, I would I would say usually a lot of teams will opt for the main instead of the Junkrat in this situation. Uh, the Sojourn is obviously not really a surprise. Uh, if anything, there is a little bit of a surprising factor coming out of the uh, of the Orisa, but that does seem to be a very comfortable and very strong hero for hookbait, so not at all uh, gonna, gonna be taking a uh, hit at that because, uh, well, they tried last map and didn't go well for him. UH Horizon will be able to instantly walk through the A. Choke point, though, not a problem whatsoever. Antinate onto Hookbait to be uh, leading to an early Suzu usage as well from uh, G Warrior. That's a good chance uh, to get some damage down. But of course, Nemesis Form already used. Have to work a little bit before that Romatra comes back online. There he is with the punch, with the pommels. Straight through the enemy team. Not quite as many eliminations as you might think with all the pressure that's been put out. Great effort from both the uh, base and Sea Warrior to get that, uh, keep the health back up for most of these uh, players and also get the speed boost at the right time. Of course, there's finally the flank. The Sojourn looking for a little bit of value. Not a beautiful anti day comes out and that's base and Saucy going down. That looks to be point A finally. Very good effort. Chaos is still safe and not vicious. It's not as much. Uh, not much more you can do, though. Yeah. Uh, UH Horizon's composition has, has just has more dynamicism in terms of its 
uh, damage activation, right? Like, in, if you look at the tank line uh, in that head-to-head, -head, Diego uh, has opportunities with the Nemesis form to just kind of walk through it and, and affect their will on the match. Uh, by pummeling, you know, uh, players down. Meanwhile, uh, Hookbait has to, is at the mercy, sort of, of the DPS uh, to find those final blows, and Vicious denied that with a well-timed headshot onto the opposing soldier. So, you have to see a lot more eliminations kind of come through from the DPS here if Hookbait is going to hold up to Diego. Uh, you heard it here first. Uh, Ramacho is definitely a tempo tank, guys. You, you figured out what it means. A fun to give an apt description of that chaos. We'll find Diego though, so that's not going to be a factor in this fight in particular. And a beautiful Terra Surge will find off another two tar targets. Maybe I rise, it's going to have to go back to the drawing board. I mean, that's exactly what I'm kind of highlighting, right? That the the Chaos needs to uh, Chaos and Saucy both need to pressure down Diego on the damage because that's what opens up Hookbait. The difference between these compositions is Hookbait's more for cleanup, whereas Diego is more for engage damage. Speaking of engage damage, the Riptire coming in from Saucy on the flank. I've ever seen the gate damage that would definitely be it. They're looking for the tire, though. Oh, they found it. Easy. It does I force mean, the yeah. immortality field, I guess. I mean, it, it, it does, but on the other hand, losing a tire for something like that, it's, uh, I'd rather have the ultimate. Uh, to, be, to be fair, there is the Tsunia Rush, though, from the Warrior, the Blizzard from the other side. Boron will get the offensive eliminations on base and chaos, and they fight Sea Warrior, too. Still a couple of targets online, but with just hook bait, I have a feeling. UH Horizon is going to be able to you know, push through and uh, put some more pressure down on the second point. Yeah, she's yeah. very close. Yeah, especially because the support is still up for UH Horizon. Having a healer it makes you so... And and uh, GFU Sports having lost both theirs means they can't actually fight. Still, that's a fairly expensive fight for UH Horizon. So you look to think that maybe they used Annihilation with the Nano Boost coupled together. They need to keep Boron alive here. Oh, they really do. They do manage to do so. And now it's up to Diego O and Bean Ranger. The Nemesis form is out, and there we go. Just as it runs out, you activate the Nano, you activate the Annihilation, and with the Vortex, well, they were all pushed in the air. It's an instant pull back down the slow. They do get out of the range with the speed boost, but it's a big pushback and point two guaranteed for you with your Horizon. 420 on the clock. It's a lot of time, but you might need it in point three of King's Row. Yeah, uh, GFU gonna mirror, by the way, uh, the composition that is being run here. There we go. Well, nearly so, anyway. Supports will be different. Still opting for that speed boost. That's been working well at times for them in the past, but they are missing a little bit of that bursting that both the Anna Baptiste provide. Looking for those anti nades to especially provide a lot of value when that Suzu is not online. Boron with the right clicks through the application matrix has another Blizzard ready. Just uh, saw them use. I feel like they just used it, but it's been a while already. And Diego, whoa. Nemesis form versus Nemesis form, but there is indeed the Blizzard to try to speed out, but it's not going to be Lucio that gets away. It's the rest, the rest of the team. They also, get hook bait, so no more tank, no more Lucio. The wall will make sure they trade at least the tanks back out, and uh, the overclock is ready for Chaos if they choose to use it, but it doesn't even look like they need it. With a respawn advantage, they are going to push back into the attackers. That being said, it's still a bit of a chaotic back and forth. And with the chaotic back and forth, usually comes some uh, an outcome that can be unexpected. With no one really going down for like a solid 10 seconds, this could be a re-engage as well for the attack. They just cannot seem to get this May. Voron is just incredibly uneliminatable. And that's what you want to see, the immortal May. No one goes down into the pit. It always looked like they were going to pay a visit to the Omnic Housing District. This fight has been going forever because they barely got a reset. They just had to keep chaotically fighting. When Chaos goes down, you know that's the advantage that UH Horizon is looking for. Soldier advantage is a huge advantage in the game at this point in time. Sound barrier does not help Hookbait just enough. It has to be the uh, Annihilation plus the Nemesis form. But Annihilation trade means Diego is going to win because they had a little bit more firepower on their end. That with the soldiers still missing from chaos, and uh, while the overclock is out, you're just stuck in spawn versus Ramatra with the shield. That's not gonna get you anywhere, chaos. Quick switch over to the tracer from Saucy. Chaos goes down as they come out of the spawn door, and there is the blizzard to immediately freeze up that ball. No more stall for you. And GFU Esports, they're gonna have to give up on this. I say that, it's a double poop from GFU base. It's not gonna be enough, but that was it would have been a beautiful comeback. Yeah, that is uh, a really unfortunate situation, though, for the GFU squad. Uh, I, I like their rotation. I like their ultimate rotation there uh, and, and, and 
uh, selection of targets. But UH Horizon plays it just a little bit better resource wise. And Voron has been a tremendous difference maker on the May. That's another Blizzard. So that was what, two Blizzards in four fights? Um, yeah. Yeah, just a well-timed generation of it. And, you know, when used on the objective and you have to contest the objective, um, the Blizzard can be game winning as we witness right there. Well, I, I, this, that paired with their survivability, like Voron was just not going down. They refused to go down. Uh, and GFU Esports Blue kept committing those resources to try and get the May. And then while they were trying to get the May and not getting the May, they were just uh, surrounded, taken out themselves and flanked from, from all the other angles. It was very, very annoying to deal with uh, May. And well, you know, she's a scientist. She knows, you know, if you don't eliminate me, we'll eliminate you over time. That's the one plus one equals two that everyone can do. That's simple math. Well, GFU, if they want to keep this map going, we we'll have to capture all three points with time remaining. Pretty hefty time bank, by the way, for UH Horizon. 210 is nothing yeah, to scoff is, at. It's great for King's Row. An interesting Sigma pickup here from Hookbait. As well you know? as the Zenyatta. Yeah. Zenyatta's back. We've, we've heard it all around the Overwatch sphere. Zenyatta is actually very playable at the moment. Pretty strong support if you can uh, deal with the Discord orb. And it looks like Diego Wo cannot deal with the Discord orb. That's an instant elimination on the Ramatra. Instant retreat from UH Horizon. They try and potentially go for a re-engage, but they may just have to give up the entire objective. There's two ticks. Yeah. Actually, they go to a Wrecking Ball. They want to go back for a recontest, but yeah, that, that one is a too, very well-timed in the way. And there's a wall. Oh, they do barely manage to get there with the Sojourn Power Slide. Vicious, though, will get eliminated. There's the Bastion doing a ton of damage onto the Wrecking Ball and crew. And that is just a recontest that might have bought some time, but it definitely didn't buy you anything else. Now the question is, does Diego stay on the Wrecking Ball here? Or is it back to... Uh... Well, something else, actually, is the question. So now it's going to be a Sigma. Sigma, okay. Yeah, makes um, sense. The Sigma is fine. Uh, the fact is, though, is that Saucy is the player by which this game now lives and dies. Um, a Sigma caught behind the Maywall is vulnerable in the extreme. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, Saucy really can be, uh, you, know, you know, sort of round winning here for their squad. I mean, especially in King's Row, these smaller streets, there's just nowhere to go. And there's a Bastion as well to just lap up all the damage that they need. Beautiful application matrix is in the way, does a lot of damage, but it's hookbait in the back line. It just gets a double GFU base that uh, man manages to finish it off. It's going to be a team kill other than the timer. Like, they just, you know, they just don't do it fast enough, but it's just a wipe. They get to go forward even further. And what we thought was a pretty good attack from Yuji Horizon might already start to get dwarfed by GFU Esports Blue. And, I mean, you expect this to be another fight win when the Blizzard comes down on the contest, right? On the objective. UH Horizon has been sort of caught unaware uh, at this stage. Between a, a wall and an accretion, right? <laughs> As is the Overwatch expression that we all know and love. Uh, that being said... Oh, goodbye, Diego. Is the jump in. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you thought a Winston was going to do. Uh, go down really fast is the answer to that, unfortunately, for EUH Horizon. And it looks like Discomp is thrown them for a loop. The Discord or plus the May plus Chaos on the Bastion is just the recipe of the, for disaster for Diego. They get nothing done. And it continues to be Mr. Heroes here in UH Horizon's uh, game plan. As Vicious goes over to an Ash. Man, you, I do not envy Diego at all. Jumping into a Bastion uh, Sigma Zenyatta is not a pleasant place to be. And yeah, they're looking to uh, bait out the transformation on the Bastion, it looks like. Now the Nano Boost just sits there. Can't even get any uptime really with that Nano Boost. Can't get their ultimate line in time. Grecian does go wide, but yeah, they started at, what, 65%? They got 10% ultra charge out of that, and they didn't really do anything. Just kind of sat there. That's really unfortunate. Really kind of almost a waste of the nano. Felt a little bit of space, I guess, but now uh, Winston is going to get rocked and pushed off the high ground. Unfortunately, Diego could not really do much else than just sit there and take it. And that's the uh, single, single Gravitic Flux onto Vicious. Finish off the Ash. 
and complete control of the high ground now for uh, GPU Esports, which is not something you often see from the attackers. They do get a couple of eliminations back. EOH Horizon is not done. And because the stigma was absent, they saw their opening. They just jumped in on it and took down the rest of GFU Esports Blue. That was a close one. A rare fumble from GFU Esports Blue, by the way. They use both support ult. They layer the support ultimates. They use them both at the same time. And actually, UH Horizon is now in a real position to wither this time bank away to, you know, less than theirs. Uh, between the Primal Rage for, for delay and the Blade for eliminations, I mean, you're in a pretty good place for your UH Horizon. All they had to If he did, is to see the Blade come through. Yeah, Voron goes down, but it's already a double elimination. Don't have to worry about anything else. Switch to the Reaper and the Junker, by the way. Reaper undoubtedly to be more annoying to the Winston. If you've got Vicious and Voron going out as well as the backline of UH Horizon, that Reaper still going to be a bit scared himself. Actually, GFU Esports not going to mirror the opposition, actually. Going over to a pseudo dive here. I hope Fake goes over to a Winston of their own. Very close to what we call the Overwatch League playoff composition these days, the Banana Rush. Missing the uh, the Sojourn slash Ooh. Tracer, but they're going to do just fine here on the defense. Double jetpack elimination. Not something you see all that often together with the, uh, the triple... Yeah, up. it was an environmental uh, kill. They uh, the jump yeah. knocked them off the high ground into even the pit worse. Below. Yeah, that's gonna feel bad. Yeah, GFU Esports Blue now unlikely to have a better time bank than UH Horizon. Uh, I mean, I think it's impossible. I don't think you're gonna even get there in 20 seconds. That's just not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, vicious on the high ground, safe and sound with the Ash. Did you just coach gun? There's a little bit of a window to jump on it without being able to move to move away instantly. But uh, I don't know what you're trying to do there, Saucy. There is too much in the way for you to get anything done with that junk rack. And the trap is already eliminated as soon as it goes. The teleport on the high ground will instantly be spotted out. Diego jumped in there. No worries whatsoever. Had the prime already. You're not even going to be scared. It's a double kill with the tire, though. Saucy not being spotted out. The Bob will get two back, so it is an even trade. And eventually, that Bob will just do more because he's continuously there, buying space, buying damage. And they take down another one. Image Horizon starting to mount a very strong defense on this point C. And they, like you said, they've already won the time back part. And I mean, now the, the problem lies for GFU Esports Blue is that. There's no guarantee they even finish capturing this objective, and even if they do, it's unlikely to be with time remaining. You're gonna have to go quick here, I think, with it. Just a, a even as the Nano comes onto either the Winston or the Genji, you just have to kind of ignore that, run to the backline with the, with the Death Blossom and a Sound Barrier, and just go to win the fight outright here. Yeah, uh, you have to get the very quick elimination. You see Chaos already taking so much damage, just to even go for a health back. I don't even uh, rely on the supports to get it there. They do take down Diego. Diego going a little bit deep and sticking around for too long. This is the opportunity you're voting for. No more Sleep Dart as well. This is a free Death Blossom for the Reaper if they want to use it. They're not going to. They're going to save it for potentially a recontest. Everyone jumps in chaotically. And uh, Chaos is looking for more targets just with the raw shotgun power of the Reaper. Doesn't have to use any of their abilities. They go down, unfortunately, before they can even use the Death Blossom. There is another Rip Tire coming close, but the respawns are too quick for you at your eyes, and they cannot clean them up fast enough. 40 seconds on the clock, Lafon. This might be impossible. This is going to be a very, very difficult situation. I mean, the Rip Tire is going to have to somehow find three uh, while shutting down some ultimates. Uh, because UH Horizon, they're going to have Nano Blade, uh, Kitsune Rush uh, to, to kind of amp it up even further. And the Bob freaking test. Um, I mean, barring a miracle, this feels like it's all UH Horizon. Boron gets the Blade, gets the Nano Boost as well. It's time once again. We'll get taken out by the Rip Tire. It's a one for two ultimate exchange. And there's the Kitsune Rush. They're looking for something more. The Death Blossom didn't really find much on the side of Chaos. And they will get found by another beautiful Bob from Vicious. Gets a triple kill with that as well. The big Omelik Butler finds himself a quadra kill. It's a team wipe. The time ticks down. And that is UH Horizon getting back a map. It's 1-1 one, one between these two teams. I mean, the Bob, you can see in the chat there, Bob, the huge it's Bob, huge. absolutely MVP. agreed. Doesn't get played the game, though. That's going to be Diego with the double jetpack environmental. They get to see it from their POV. Oh, lucky. Yeah. 
right there. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, the thing to highlight here is I think UH Horizon just more collected as a team here. Um, and even with GFU Esports Blue, their composition had a lot of value in the first two thirds of the map. But um, once they lost their momentum, it's so tough to regain it on the third point of a hybrid map because of how close the spawns the defense are. Um, and a lot of credit has to be given to UH Horizon for continuing to uh, manage their resources effectively in that third phase when, you know, down like four, uh, uh, down to like two players, um, they're able to convert uh, uh, and and deny a bunch of resources. So, yeah, UH Horizon, just a much more collected team on, on King's Row. Yeah, I mean, it definitely took them a while to get that first fight win, but after they did, they just never lost one again. And that's kind of all you need to do, win a bunch of fights in a row as long as you don't, you know, let them cap the objective. It's uh, It sounds so simple. It's not that simple at all for these teams. And to make it even a little bit simpler for them, to give them a little bit more of an opportunity to get back into the swing of things, especially GFU Blue that uh, might feel that one, to give them a little bit of a break. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes with the res uh, resume of this series. We've got at least two more maps to go. Maybe three. This could be the one, Lafon.
Hello and welcome back. It's 1-1 one, one between GFU Blue Esports and HU uh, Red Horizon coming in here. Uh, they have a red logo. You know, it's, that's how it works. They've been playing on the red side as well. It's been very good for our color coordination, LaFon. Until but now. It's, uh, yeah, they're swapping. <laughs> they're not doing it anymore. It's going to be Circuit Royale, though, for the uh, map Shambhali. has been banned out. Escort time it is. And there's a lot of different way, reasons why you would go to Circuit Real. One of them is to play Sigma. The other one is to potentially play Snipers. And we saw Sigma on, on King's Row, right? Um, so I, I would be unsurprised to see Sigma continue to have an appearance here. And uh, frankly, I think the Sigmas looked pretty good, actually, from both teams. Really um, good. In, yeah. yeah, in that last game. So um, I, 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 I would expect to see it continued. Uh, nonetheless, I think the tank play has actually been quite high caliber here uh, mm -hmm. from both teams. They've matched up very well. Um, and in terms of like the the micro setups, like the the mechanics of the players, has been across the board. I think fairly even. The macro has been a little bit awkward for you know taking turns on on map number one. Um, GFU had I think the better macro. They had better understanding of the rotations they needed to take. They had better understanding of the fights um, and and resource management, the economy. On King's Row, though, I think they, you know very much the opposite. It was it was uh, UH that was. Um, you know, more in tune with uh, the flow of the game. So, you know, as we head into map number three, here's a chance to kind of, you know, split the difference. And uh, the team that comes out here, A, puts themselves on match point. So that's a great start. But B, also, I think, gains the momentum back in their favor. Um, and specifically for GFU, this is their map pick. Um, a win here would keep them you know uh, in 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 that momentum advantage because they would then also assuming losing map number four have map pick for map number five on top of having already won control so um yeah this is not necessarily a must win for gfu but as close as you can get to it without you know being on the brink of elimination oh yeah for sure i mean uh, you know you wanna you want i mean of course you want to win every map you're on uh, you would always be in control of the tempo of a series. But, you know, it's the first map GFU Blue Esports lost. Yeah, they, uh, they got to be feeling that. They had a little bit of time to calm down. They're going to come back into it with a uh, you know, potentially new approach to things. We're going to be seeing the defense set up. Nothing really too surprising. Uh, the Sigma is there. There's the Widowmaker. There's a Hanzo. Uh, the Mercy could be a little bit of a, of a surprise to some people uh, with their recent changes. Of course, it's a, a little bit of a different play style that you have to get out of it. Uh, and with a lot of these targets, not going to be taking a particularly large amount of damage aside from Sigma. Self-heal for Mercy is going to be a little bit of a problem. But that being said, Sigma can take a lot of damage. So there's potential. See the attack of uh, GFU Esports run out here. Also, the Sigma and the Widowmaker, but they're still having Saucy on this junk rat. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of shield break here. Oh, keep an eye out for where the Widow is. It's a pretty nice head glitch for Chaos, but Vicious spots the top end of it. This is what you get the Mercy for, by the way. Vicious is taken down, and uh, it should be undone here in a moment. Yeah, definitely should be. A little bit of a uh, double elimination there. Triple Toothbait once again showing off their Sigma prowess, just like they were doing on King's Road. Google not going to be able to get away. That's just a full gonna be full team wipe here. But if you wish horizon. Have to come back into this with uh oh well, a little bit of space to work with. The cart's not quite there yet, but uh it's getting closer. Yeah, really nice play by Hookbait, actually. Uh the tank player for GFU. I mean they're they're just setting up the the aggressive uh uh space here and sort of asking everyone else to reply to them. And so far there hasn't really been a resolution. Uh, four on help out vicious to give him a little bit more sights on that widowmaker hiding behind the statue barely touching time 1.06 meters left as four on dust find one in ranger finds another and as long as they keep touching his objective this looks to go the way of uh horizon they look to set up their defense strong and solid but there's chaos with a triple kill why not this is why the Widowmaker comes out, just to get those headshots out of the way. And that's going to be a, uh, well, the point capture here for GFU Esports Blue. It looked like a fight that was going to your rise its way. And all of a sudden, there's the Widowmaker. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing there is Diego is contesting uh, Hookbait on the point, obviously. And is forced to use the shield selfishly. Um, but that just opens up chaos, right? It opens up the hitscan from afar. 
Um, and once the Widow's eliminated, Chaos has complete reign. And GFU Esports Blue, they make that run through with ease. So they'll have four and a half minutes now in the second phase. A couple of changes from them, though. Saucy on Tracer and Chaos on Cassie. Well, Chaos uh, finds at least the Magnetic Grenade onto Vorn. We'll get the elimination. This Vicious does find Saucy. But these changes, though, they have to be a little bit closer to take these engagements more valuably. Of course, Cassie with the fall off range. She's going to be doing a little bit more damage now. You have to be wary of that. The Gravitic Flux onto Diego. Whoa, that's a lot of damage, but it will instantly be healed up by the Mercy. Yodel in a very good spot here with the Valkyrie to heal all of that up in a blink of an eye. Actually, ridiculous how much healing comes out of that nowadays. Diego Wo is uh, pushing back. Have their own Prophetic Flux, Flux ready. Doesn't need to use it just yet. This fight seems to be completely in their control. Yeah, Vicious came alive on that one. Uh, the Widowmaker, you know, wh what Chaos can do, Vicious felt they could reply with. And, uh, I mean, well, they could. It was three eliminations from them, and they're able to hold for the moment. Also on DPS Roulette now on the Hanzo in the meantime. You see a good Gravitic Flux come out from Diego. Well, this time around, that's an elimination onto base. And that Lucio, you're going to probably uh, be contested. Interesting that they lost a sound barrier into that. Uh, I mean, th that was that was Voran, actually, who sort of set that play up. A well-placed Dragon Strike forces an early sound barrier um, just to keep everyone alive uh, because of how much damage he was dealing. And then the cleanup comes in with the Gravitic Flux. I mean, the cleanup comes in, but it's not over yet, actually. Hookbait is still quite healthy here on the point and fighting. Yeah, Hookbait is, uh, is not one you can just count out like that, but it's Yorissa or the Sigma. They just keep on pushing, they keep on trucking until they're down. A lot of power comes from those stair flanks from uh, Chaos and Saucy all the time. They're using that high, the, uh, the flanks to their heart's content. At this point, the flanks are not going to matter. Everyone takes this much damage. Hookbait will finally fall to that Sigma. That's going to be the end of the push. A threat emerges. Oh, tragically for Saucy. Vicious walks away with the Magnetic Grenade Elimination. Buys a little bit more time here as the Resurrect comes in from Yodo. UH Horizon have done a good job of slowing the game down, by the way. Uh, these, like, idle skirmishes that GFU Esports Blue are being baited into uh, are uh, dealing enough damage to not straight out win the fight, but also force GFU Esports to go back to spawn. Not a good flux coming out. They barely get the Cassidy out of the flux so they don't get instantly eliminated by the knockup. Nice uh, grenade onto Hook Bay. The Dragon Strike zoning is splitting the team a little bit as the Graffiti Flux comes in. Not quite the combo with it, but it doesn't have to be because they still get the triple kill. Chase down the Lucio. Why don't you do the elimination onto base? And that's a wipe. One minute 38 on the clock. UH Horizon are doing a good job of uh, following up the damage that Diego is doing. Hookbait is not getting the same level of support from or run support from the team um, because they're getting picked off on the entry point on the way to the Aww. objective. GFU Esports Blue now. I mean, going over to a dive. Uh, Doomfist, Doomfist, Genji Tracer. Genji. That is so I mean, I'm, I'm all for it as long as he gets the value, right? That's always what you're looking for. And Hookbait still is going to have to get close enough in order to get the abilities off. Just. Uh, as Genji and Tracer to a degree vicious under a lot of pressure could sleep dart and an antenate from Bean Ranger to deny the follow-up of the Cassidy. Could have potentially gone for a shot or two there with the high noon, but didn't want to risk the deflect and didn't quite get the timing right on the other shots. No about a lot of time, but a lot of space. 50 seconds on the clock, and they're still putting a lot of pressure on this Cassidy. They really want that the cowboy to be out of the fight. There's gonna be Borum that goes down first, kind of going around Diego. Diego not able to feel for their entire team all at once. That's not how it works against the dive team, of course. And to try and find some value. They do find Chaos traded for Bean Ranger. Now they're gonna have to try and get a meter strike other than Mercy. Don't quite get it. As uh, this team's cart is still pushing forward, it's still the stigma in the way. Now you gotta finally go for the tank. That's a lot of healing through the Valkyrie as well as the anti nade. Beautifully with the nano boost, there will be more supports. And Bean Ranger had just come back, used a couple of their abilities, and instantly goes down again to the Genji Blade. Nice stick onto the Casty. Vicious will go down, but it's another Graphitic Flux coming out from Diego. Someone has to touch the cart. They do indeed, and the cart's not gonna get there. Three seconds. Can anyone get there? I don't think. Maybe Saucy on the Sombra. I don't think I think they're too far away. Round over, GFU Esports Blue. Their payload, their Ferrari, their Formula One car stops just a smidge before checkpoint two. Yeah, what a tremendous performance by uh UH Horizon. Uh on that second phase. A lot of that, as I said, was just getting those early picks, getting those skirmish fight wins 
But in the end, I mean, it's just all sustained from UH Horizon. The Mercy, the Mercy player, uh, the amount of times that realistically they should have died um, and the the movement, uh, the peel from the rest of the team. I mean, look at that. If, if that... Um, if that meteor strike can eliminate the mercy, this is a very different fight. But instead, they stay alive, uh, are able to get the Valkyrie off in time to heal through the Dragon Blade, and uh, you know, UH Horizon. That 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 opens up Diego to be able to build a Gravitic Flux to be able to win, uh, win the fight. So, um, in general, I, you ha a lot of credit has to be given to UH Horizon as a team, and. Uh, after control, I think they've really understood their assignment uh, in terms of approaching uh, the the macro of a fight, right? The 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 proper rotation uh, of 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 utility. And in fairness, GFU Esports Blue was doing a fairly decent, if not a really good job, of sort of ignoring the Sigma and the start of those fights, going after the supports. The Ana, in particular, Bean Ranger went down like three times in one fight. Uh, so the sustain was already fairly reduced, but it just couldn't get through it. And every single time there was just the next resource and the next rotation and the next uh, mercy beam that came in the way. Very well done from UH Horizon. Now they're going to be on their own attack. Starting out with Voron getting a pick onto their opposing Widowmaker. So no more chaos. No more Widow kind of follows free sidelines here for Voron. Yeah, realistically, uh, Saucy is the only threat. Maybe Sea Warrior from afar with the Kunai could, you know, perhaps two tap you, but you're gonna have to focus more on healing, especially with Diego taking so much space forward here. Uh, you gotta feel free to walk around. You don't have to shield, use the shield against the Widow Peel. Nice sleeve dart onto the Sigma together with Dynamite as well. Maybe the Antinate? No, they didn't quite get that. It probably wasn't on cooldown. And it's, uh, not a life threatening situation for a hook bait. A lot of damage being already done by Vicious. Gets a fair bit of ult charge up as hook bait finds more on his back line. Another aggressive posture from the Sigma as Diego is desperately trying to hold the, hold the entire team of Esports Blue back. It's not going to happen though. They uh, only find Chaos and Saucy. They do start trading a little bit, but it's just not enough numbers left. Okay, look at the damage difference though between Diego and, and hook bait, right? Yeah, it's about a 30% uh, uh, damage increase from the Sigma. And not all of it can be accounted for the damage boost either. Ooh, not, not, not in time with the healing there. They're going to try and go for the rest, but a beautiful accretion. Hookbait not letting themselves get toppled as the Sigma just yet as they uh, charge up to the Gravitic Flux. Almost going to meet Diego there. There we go. Another even with the Gravitic Flux from Diego. Is there sooner? Suzu comes out just in time. It was almost too early. Sticky Nade onto Diego will be able to uh, get them low enough to get, to get eliminated. Did you see Warrior? Doesn't really matter though. They get all the eliminations. GFU Esports Blue is holding again. 150 on the clock. The card is fairly close. It's basically one, maybe one and a half fights, but they're going to win it. The follow through from damage from GFU Esports Blue again on the no on the Gravitic Flux. This time it's flipped on a head, right? On the first uh, on the first half of this map, UH or Horizon was getting those getting those follow up damage, but now GFU Esports has returned in kind. Now you have the sustain of the sound barrier. I mean, even with a Bob, you have to feel that this is not going to be as effective as you'd like it to be. Bob is in and Vicious finds Chaos, so at least they get a pick as a, uh, not necessarily directly as a result, but just in the way. And so much damage goes on the back line. Gets one, gets another accretion on the second, and that's just a Sigma in the way. And somehow they just force their way through by just using one ultimate. GFU not wanting to commit to that. Uh, weirdly, I don't know why. Uh, UH Horizon don't have anything beyond the Bob, and they know that they don't have anything beyond the Bob because the previous fight, the Gravitic Flux had been used. So, a fight you don't commit to, and now instead of having to be, instead of being in last fight territory, right, with uh, coming close to to, uh, to to using some of these ultimates, instead, you now have three minutes, and the payload's still moving forward. Yeah, good. Push your back onto Diego, well, though. They might be able to get the elimination. I don't think the resurrection can come in. Yodel no, will actually just go down. It's going to be a fight win very quite easily. They still have to use that uh, the dragon. At least they use it if they have to. Just a lone Ash gets staggered out a little bit. 244 on the clock. Nothing to worry about for UH Horizon yet, though. 
Still plenty of time to work with and some resources. Uh, a couple of changes. I think Voron switches over to a Sojourn here. Um, I mean, GFU Esports, you, you kind of have to expect them to go fast, right? You, you need to burn time off the clock here quite a bit. And you cannot allow UH Horizon to get to the point for free like this. Keep in mind, the payload is going to be moving forward quite a bit. And the checkpoint is right ahead of them, right? The golden box of victory is clearly in sight. That's one fight away. They find base early. There means no sound barrier against the Graphitic Flux. Bootbait finds one, but Diego finds two, finds three with Vicious with the Bob. And that was the biggest moment to find that Lucio. All you needed was a sound barrier, but it just wasn't there. The payload's going to move forward. And now base comes back, but it's just a low Lucio. Might have to use the sound barrier to stall in overtime. No, I think that's fine. I think you can get the response back in time, but that was close to being a disaster for GFQ Esports Blue. And they're not necessarily out of it yet. Nope. The fights are still, still going on. Time. They, I mean, that's the ant is just to buy a little bit of time. It's not getting much value. We're waiting for that nano boost to potentially go onto Voron, maybe onto Diego, depending on who you want to give it to. But so we're just getting close to the overclock. It's going to be a uh, mid-fight surprise for GFU Esports Blue. All they've got is the sound barrier. That's literally the only tool in their box. Chaos goes down early. They're going to have to use it soon. Otherwise, it's going to come out. There is a sound barrier indeed, just like you're expecting to come out in the panic or the chaos situation. And that is going to be the overclock after the sound barrier dissipates. It's one elimination. They just put a bunch of damage down on the Sigma. And who's going to contest? A Tracer? No way, says Diego. That's the card. Moving into the objective. No one can really touch... UH Horizon putting themselves on a 2-1 lead in the match. And now all momentum has actually shifted uh, in UH Horizon's favor because this is now match point for them, right? And that was GFU's map pick. You can see Diego's mechanics once more on the Sigma. They clearly thought they had something going with the, with the Sigma. It was doing very well in King's Row, but Diego doing just as well. And a lot of that also comes back to, you know, the back line. How yeah. much difference does that Mercy actually make? Well, it turns out in this situation, it made a lot of difference. I think you at some point alluded after that, uh, after that defense, like how uncatchable that Mercy was, or at least how much they didn't catch her. Whether she wasn't catchable, that's another question. Um, but that makes a big difference because we saw a lot of the time that Lucio go down on the other side. Yeah, I'm, and I mean, you know, it's easy to kind of highlight supports in this meta because um, yeah. their cooldowns are so uh, important. And I think the other thing too to note is that not only are the support resources important because they always are, but for the first time, there's a, for the first time in a while in Overwatch Two. Um, supports actually have a lot of agency in this patch in terms of their application of resources. They get to decide a lot of the times when, you know, the game plays in their favor. Um, and, you know, like, uh, to, to contrast that with, uh, you know, if you think back to the Junker Queen meta, Brig and Lucio were the hardest characters to play with the least impact on the game, right? Um, gone are those days. It's no longer, you know, just a, an alt uh, sort of situation you actually have to really be aware of how you're setting up your team for success and frankly the back line for uh horizon has simply done a better job of it um and is yeah. enabling diego to take these very aggressive forward positions um and kind of just you know batter down the front line of the opposing team yeah, and uh, with that of course we are going to go to a map four we were always going to go to map four it's going to be push one of the newest game modes in Overwatch 2. There is another one coming at some point, but for now, this is what we got to replace our Assault maps. Coliseo is going to be banned. We're going to go to Esperanza in the morning time. They want to wake up early. They already said good morning in chat after that round ended accidentally. <laughs> or maybe on purpose. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, Esperanza, it's time. It's time for more. Maybe more Sigma even. It's very possible here. Yeah, and I mean, you know, clearly, the, I mean, one thing Diego has done a great job of is, you know, aided by that backline is pressing W um, mm -hmm. and really taking attention from the opposing team. Sometimes tanks can be afraid to go in um, and they end up just wasting the uh, resources they're given. The flip side of that is some tanks also overstay their welcome and play beyond the resources they have available to them. Diego has done neither, um, has played aggressively, but within the means of the team and... Uh, 
um, a big part as to why UH Horizon are now sitting at match point. And, uh, you know, I think if they can continue this 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 performance on on each France, there is a very real opportunity opportunity rather that they take this this map and, and the series. There's a very good opportunity for that indeed. Uh, and with a 2-1 lead, they are, of course, on match point. So this is the time to take the lead. That being said, Esperanza so in, in, it is one of those maps that can flip on a dime. One of those quickest turnaround comeback maps there is. Could be a very hot and heavy one. And uh, it's just like Control, once again, one of those maps where we actually do get to see that back and forth uh, in one round. We don't have to go to attack and then to defense. Yeah. And then, nope, it's just all happening condensed in a different form of that control with a more dynamic point. All right. When we return, the action continues. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Excuse for the short interim, but we're going to get into it regardless. It's Esperanza time, Lafon between UFG Sports Blue and UH uh, Horizon. Yeah. And so far, UH Horizon, they started off a little bit slower. Not slow by any means. But they've come back very strong with their 2-1 lead now. Yeah, I think, I think it's also kind of playing into their uh, comfort a little bit, right? If one thing can be said about control is that it's the home of chaos, right? It's, it's it, it tends to be a, a map type sure. that can really uh, reward like these skirmish uh, skirmish fights, you know, sort of uh, not really getting true resets, fighting, you know, in, in awkward places, 
you know, continue repressing the aggression. Um, but I think we've played a little bit more standard since then on King's Row and on uh, Circuit Royale. And that has actually favored UH Horizon quite a bit. It's also allowed them, once they've gone to Sigma, to have Diego put pressure down, you know, in that head-to-head. -head. So um, a very real opportunity for them to now close out the series as we move into Ishpanza. And now make no mistake, it's not going to be easy for them. Push mirrors control and that it can also be a very chaotic uh, yeah. map type. Um, and so I, it's not, I wouldn't, I, I, it's not a foregone conclusion that the series ends here. Uh, but at least I think now that UH Horizon has really warmed up and gotten their feet under them, um, it, it very much could be a case of them taking this map away. Yeah, and of course, we always talk a little bit about like the map layout and the way you approach different things. And it's not quite the same as control. Because in, like, the, the main problem with control, the problem with control, uh, is that its main difference from push in a lot of ways is there are these more defined choke points on the map, these more defined positions where you have to enter uh, to get to the objective or you have to enter to get to the fight. And because this objective is constantly moving, because the, the map is a little bit more laid out, is more like they're, you know, the serpentine of the actual uh, objective path, as well as all the little flank routes, etc. Um, there is more opportunity to play similar to like Circuit Royale that we just saw, uh, or, or you know, other more escort-like map types, even hybrid to a degree. So we'll see if that uh, makes you as your horizon play a little bit more comfort. We're gonna come out on the uh, Ramatra as well as GFU uh, Esports going to come out on the Orissa here. So very much a brawl, right? There's no, this is going to be front to back, you know, meet close quarters uh, and, and, and uh, play uh, close uh, against each other. Now, UH Horizon, uh, the Ramatra looked good for them to a certain extent. Or sorry, the Orissa uh, looked good for GFU to a certain extent. We'll see if they can shut down the Ramatra here from Diego. Uh, good to uh, engage straight up from Diego. Gets a bunch of damage down onto his base. Once again, the first to fall. And Lucio not happy with their uh, current situation, I am guessing. That's a good magnet nade onto Chaos after one or two shots that will surely be going down. No deals for the time. But gets straight up back by the uh, combination of a Javelin as well as GFU Sauce. You just being able to shoot back at it. Hookbait, still the dominant Orisa that we know knows him to be. So earlier also on uh, Legion Tower. But, uh, for now, they're going to keep pushing the bot. Diego there, I think, getting a little bit greedy, uh, trying to hunt yeah, down the sure. uh, the weak chaos at the start of that fight, and instead just gets punished for it. So once the Nemesis Ooh. form runs out, Tank has to be a little bit more aware of their presence. And Hookmate has done a, jo a great job of just farming damage. Already has a Terror Surge. Yeah, it definitely does. It's going to be a great location to do it as well. Trying to find the opening here on the Chaos. Doesn't quite get the Magnetic Nade stick, but I mean, like, Beam Ranger goes down behind them. Hook Fate with the Terror Surge, like we pointed out, already gets the use and the value out of that. So they get to walk forward, damage down the entirety of UH Horizon. And they're struggling already. UH Horizon, uh, a, a far cry from their performance on Circuit Royale, where they run at their opponent. Instead, here, you know, they're trying to, instead of running it together as a team, they're just sort of going in one by one, filtering together. And GFU Esports have collected themselves tremendously, are slowing the game down, and are the, instead the ones playing, you know, five to a team. Look at those headshots on the Orisa, though. Hookbait's not going to be able to stay alive. They do trade it out. And there's the high noon from Saucy. Gets a double somehow. Even though they get the pick on that Orisa early, it's a full team wipe on the side of GFU Esports Blue, and that's ridiculous. That is a big pickup there for GFU Esports Blue, because now they are going to hit that 90 meter mark. And we've said before, 110 meters um, is sort of the magic number for basically a, a, a one push map. GFU are getting ever closer. Esperanza and we're only seven minutes in. There's a lot in Overwatch still to be played, and that is what they're trying to show here on the Horizon side. They're not going to be able to show it with Voron, though. They're already going down to the right click of Saucy, of sort of Chaos. Diego Ro, though, with the Annihilation, will push forward, trying to get something in that back line. We'll at least find two together with Vicious, but it's just a trade back. There's so much control coming out here off this front and back line of GFU Esports Blue at the moment. They're pulling them apart, and they're playing them like a fiddle. 
And the big problem here is that GFU Esports Blue are not losing these fights. Uh, I mean, they may not particularly have won this one, but more critically, they didn't lose it. And that means the bot doesn't reset, does not go back to center. And now, I mean, that's the full respawn. The full team has come in, and UH Horizon has, has, is no closer to really contesting uh, the objective. That being said, we saw this on King's Row. King's Row, they only had to win one fight very close to the end of the map, and then all of a sudden they were holding forever. They might be able to do it here on East Pedunsa, but that means they also got to go on the offense. Diego Owo now back on the Wrecking Ball. Bean Ranger will find hook bait. They do trade out Cassidy's once again, but Chaos with the overclock we will find one. We'll find a lot of damage on a couple more. And with only two members out of spawn at the moment, it's going to be impossible to hold this. And GFU Esports Blue, I don't know what the extra minutes they needed were for, but I guess it was to set this up because, man, this is a dominant push map. Overclock in. Gets one. Vicious finally finds a couple eliminations. At least maybe, well, just finds one. I thought they were going to find more, but they only found one. They do find the two eliminations in total so far, and Chaos is under pressure. Though it does look like with 520 on the clock, there is finally going to be a sort of decisive fight win coming out here from UH Horizon with the elimination on the hook bait. That does seem to be the case. The problem, though, is that GFU Esports has essentially completed the map. So UH Horizon is going to have to finish Esperanza in five minutes. Um, without, you know, having the bot reset and lose progress. Because it's not just about winning fights. They have to win fights and keep the bot in in GFU Esports' side of the map. It's a good start. It's a good placement of that minefield. Complete control over that hallway. Somehow, Voron still dies. Very weird how Voron is... Well, not weird. It's very typical that Voron keeps going down so early. And Diego will cannot even get to a health pack. But they fight away from the, uh, from the ejector, from the bot. They get 15 meters. Only a hundred and, uh, what, 30, 23 to go? And the bot's moving the other way. Yeah, and, uh, I, you have to expect that you're gonna get some of these stagger kills, too. Find Vicious. Vicious does get the Mega. Ooh, but forced to recall. And they recall through the rail gun. I think otherwise they might have just been eliminated. So at least there's that. <laughs> Forward spot but, uh, earned by, uh, GFU Esports once more. All this yeah. is just time that's not spent pushing the bot either, right? Yeah, not yeah. engaging, not pushing. It's oh, and they just spotted just Again, on a flank randomly, we'll get like, just instantly taken out. Not even a second thought. It's like breathing at this point, taking out Voron. You don't have to think about it. It's just, it just happens. Another uh, push forward from hook bait. Gets one, gets two, gets three. And uh, yeah, I mean, you might be able to stall a little bit on the Wrecking Ball, but that looks to be all about all you're going to be able to do because with a couple of meters, this bot's done. And I think the UH Horizon is, uh, I would say they've given up, but they know they know what's up. They know, they know what time it is. It's not high noon. Well, it's high noon for Voron, but they're not even going to give like finish that ultimate off. It's just the Wrecking Ball, the objective. They got Nanos to survive a little bit longer. That's a dominant completion from GFU Esports Blue, and we're going to map five, fun. Yeah, tremendous showing here from GFU Esports. What a statement win on push. It's rare we see a completion, rarer still that it's finished that quickly. But uh, that was a one-sided push map. Yep. I've seen one that was very... Uh, I, don't think, I, might, I don't think I've ever seen a push map that was that one-sided. It was uh, even in my own quick play games, and those are stomps sometimes. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So I fun. mean, uh, I, a lot of credit has to be given to Hookbait, right? The on on the Arisa yeah. because the uh, set. You know, we talked about Diego on Circuit Royale on the Sigma, just you know, setting the tempo for the team. Um, Hookbait does just that. The first like third of the map was all Hookbait. Uh, running through, shutting down. Uh, I mean, Diego first of all, you know, as the uh, as the Ramatra, but then uh, you know we saw the terror surge there in the corner as the highlight of the game, uh, and then continues to uh, just you know press the tempo uh, higher and higher. And there's nowhere for uh, there's no what uh, that UH can do to respond. So we now head to a map five. This does technically end up being the map pick of uh, 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 yeah. but. I mean, we only have to echo back the fact that, you know, they the last team to win control was GFU. And on top of that, with a stomping like they had just now on Esperanza, you have to feel the mental game is back in their favor. Yeah, we're going to give them a little bit of time for that mental, though, giving a few minutes before we have to map five. 
There is uh, at least three maps that aren't going to be playable. The one they played earlier, plus the two bands that come out. I'll let you know all about that after we come back for the conclusion of this series. Map 5, coming at you soon. Battlegrounds are being chosen for map five between UFG Esports and UH Horizon Lafon map five. It's 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 such a we don't get to see it all that often. When we get to see it, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in this particular game, especially, 
um, it is going to be enlightening. Uh, and of course, keep in mind, this is a case for uh, GFU to stay flawless in their mm. uh, performance. So a win here would be extremely impressive for them. Um, and of course, it is in their favor as well. Not only did they win control to start off this series, they dominated the last map, like straight, like basically shut out uh, UH Horizon on Ishparansa. So as we move into map number five here on Nepal, um, you have to think that uh, they, uh, I mean, GFU's riding the high of like kind of playing that super aggressive style on the previous map. Does UH Horizon have it in them to kind of uh, reset uh, you know, their mental game after, you know, the performance that uh, was was showcased in the last map. And I think that's going to really decide this game because in terms of the, the you know, the in-game sort of setup, the, the macro and the micro, these teams have been about even. Mechanically, they're on par. It really has just been a map-to-map -map difference at times. Yeah, it really has been. And uh, like you said, you know, that this is the time for GFU Esports Blue to basically just drive it home um that being said you know there is a possibility that is going the other way although we also have to mention the one loss they did get on the uh horizon side was a 3-2 and uh, that might very well have to deal with, with this the strength of their control and push maps that might just be something they have to work on a little bit more that gfu esports blue is going to be able to take advantage of and uh, sometimes that's how it is in overwatch you know yeah. you have to win two map types as long as one of them is control. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been some very famous uh, stories in the past of uh, just being excellent at control and certain, having to translate certain to... championship teams, you know, in, in the past. Definitely have not done that for an entire playoffs run, only win two map types. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what uh, GFU comes out. I'm not surprised that we see what they come out because this is pretty much what they ran last time. Yeah, this is a mirror of the uh, opening yeah. uh, game on Lijiang Tower in this series. Mm. Also, this series had a, a lot of uh, old school maps in it. Dijon yes. Tower, King's Row, now Nepal. But then of course we also had Circuit Reality Spadanza, yeah. so we got a lot of new in there as well. Nice varied mix, as we say. Well, we are underway. The teleport's outside of the spawn. Map number five is at the ready, and wow, uh, UH Horizon already on the objective. That's a big yeah. anti. A really big anti, really big engagement. And once again, they want to push out the aggression and they get to do it this time. No slowing down for nobody. Get to get Chaos out there before they could even charge a second railgun shot. Ridiculously fast, ridiculously aggressive, and ridiculously effective as well from Huge Horizon. First point control goes to them. And they get to uh, enjoy the energy of that first fight win. That was, that was a first fight one before... Uh, they chased down players with the spawn before the objective had even been unlocked. That's how aggressive they had been. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, UH Horizon, though, they did open up uh, Lijiang Tower with the first point in their favor. So this is not, uh, not a one situation yet. Oh, sure it isn't. They know how to engage and open up uh, maps, but can they maintain and defend this objective for, until the 100% mark? There's a lot of poke and prod going on back and forth. Here's the engagement finally with the speed boost as well. They're really playing around the Lucio timings really well. Chaos finds the elimination with the uh, on Boron. Gene Ranger falls, but there is a Sea Warrior going down on the other side. There's a bit of trading going back and forth. Once again, the Chaos has been enlightened. You see Hukbei trying to uh, chase down Vicious. Will go down eventually. But there's still a lot of pressure from Diego on the objective. There's the return, the respawns coming back in. Of course, with the Symmetra, the teleporter, it's going to be very easy to get those respawns back in. And now with the Lucios and the Kiriko, this is going to be a back and forth. This uh, fight is not going to end for like another minute, it feels like, Lafon. Uh, I mean, now the respawns are coming back in for UH Horizon Both as teams. well. A nice teleporter from Goron to get everyone back into the thick of things once again. And that's a Kitsune Arch committed by GFU Esports Blue. They thought they had it. They, they thought, thought they could come back in. Yeah. And I mean, instead, UH Horizon have now forced final fight without really using all that much. Sound Barrier and Terror Surge, you know, to, to hold this choke point down. And I mean, GFU Esports, they should win this fight, but they may have to overcommit to get it. 
They may have to. They already opened up with the Symmetra Wall. There's a Sound Beer to counter against the Terror Surge. You can use the Terror Surge of their own. No Illuminations come out of either of them. Finally, Boron will be found in the follow-up. More Symmetra. A lot of pressure off that point. Relieved. Finally, that point looks to be flipped with 99%. And it's going to be UH Horizon coming back into it with, uh, you know, not nothing. At least they get to save the overclock uh, GFU Esports Blue do. I don't envy Chaos's position, though, because Voron will absolutely have the Photon Barrier. And having to dance on the side of the wall to deal damage is honestly a very tough task. They can even put a Nano Boost to Diego in the, in the face of the Sojourn, and then what you're going to do with the Overclock? Not much. I mean, put a lot of damage into a target that's not going to go down to it, I guess. Forum, though, will not get the wall up in time. The Overclock is used very early just to make sure they get that off and get the value. Triple kill from Chaos. Might even get a little bit more. There's four. Can they get the ace? No, they can't because the last target's already gone. Yeah, Vicious Vanish from uh, the thick of things once that showed up. I just, that just is a stay of execution, though. It's not a guaranteed win. UH Horizon still has all the tools they need to. Photon yeah, they Barry. didn't use any. Yeah. So, they just, yeah, it's great. Almost too clean of a fight from GFU. Almost. Nice yeah, stick the there. Straight onto the Sojourn and a lot of damage onto the Arista. That surely will be it. I mean, they got to deal, deal a little bit with the Symmetric Turrets. But there is the wall. The Kitsune Rush is not going to get anybody because there's just no target to go after. Diego overcommits a little bit. We saw that before, but they both use their, lose their Orisa. There is the return of the Symmetra. They do get their own wall up now. That might be a little bit of a state execution or at least potentially a comeback for the side of GFU Esports if they can maintain this, but it doesn't look like it. There is a very low Orisa on that point. Everyone falls and it's UH Horizon that comes back into it. There is the Orisa that's going to try and get onto this objective. They will be able to do so. Hook bait. And there is the sound barrier. Didn't quite get there enough to save the Orisa, but it will, it will again elongate the stall on this objective. The overtime is still not taken down fully. And there's DPS with the Kiriko. Kiriko will instantly fall, though. No more Sea Warrior, no more Saucy, no more Chaos. And that's finally the objective secured for UH Horizon after what felt like, you know, a fairly decent stall. Yeah, I mean, GFU almost make that, uh, almost bring it back to the end there. But UH Horizon, I mean, they. they uh showing discipline in that round a tremendous amount of it too to not overcommit and then i mean a nano symmetra at high charge is such a dangerous target uh to kind of play up against in gfu esports they run out of uh, personnel and that means that uh horizon are now one round away from closing this series out Which Horizon setting themselves up for success. Even got a little bit of a uh, of a failure margin now, but they're both going to try and get to the objective as fast as possible. We saw how quick UH Horizon was last time. Going to be able to be just as quick this time. No points in GFU Esports Blue even trying to get to the objective first. You're not going to get there. We are Symmetra Lucio Strat. Beats your Symmetra Lucio Strat. And Hookbait instantly gets antenated. No Suzu in time from T Warrior to save them. And that's just going to be the instant point cap. Because what are you going to do with that Eurissa? The answer is not much. Oh, and now with multiple players hit with a uh, another anti-nade there from Yodel. So can't actually contest the objective. So another, another big presence moment for UH Horizon. Um, keep on. Oh, I mean, now GFU Esports have been caught in the trap of changing up a couple of things saucy over to a junk rat how do you get in oh what an and that forces the suzu so early yep. it's, uh, a very early suzu indeed but uh you know early suzu doesn't mean it's going to be a valuable suzu in this case it's just not happening because <laughs> uh horizon has a full control over this objective they just locked it down uh, there's many like it but this one is ours Yaddle. This is the Pulse Village. You're yeah, not going to get it. Yaddle was a hero there, right? That anti need to force the Suzu out early, then a sleep dart on a target, and then the elimination as well. Now they build up to the Nano Boost, and I mean, I expect it goes to Voron once more, but even if it goes to Diego, uh, there's no wrong target, I think, here. Another big anti-nade, another Suzu forced. 
Yep, that was Hizu Force indeed. Diego, whoa, with the nano boost, just walks into a Kiriko. Will eventually go down because of TP into a uh, into a Symmetra. And yeah, you can just switch out to a Junkrat, but just throwing out grenades is not going to always land anything. Yeah, statistically, you'll land a couple because that's, that's kind of how that works, isn't it? But... It needs, it needs to hit more than a couple in order to get an actual team wipe or a, uh, a point control fight. Now you can see it. Here's your right. They're getting confident. They're pushing forward. They want a little bit more out of this. They want to say, you know what? You don't even get to see the objective anymore. That's how much it's ours now. Beautiful engagement onto the Orisa. Another anti nade that opens it up to early Susu. And that means this Orisa is not going to be safe at all. No one gets through because Diego says this gate is uh, going to be closed for the rest of you. I hold my spear in the way and I am the guardian off the high ground. Voron. Pinches off Saucy. There's a little bit of a touch attempt from the Lucio. Potentially, if base doesn't even get there. Overtime starts sticking. I don't think anyone can touch. This is it. UH Horizon, as dominant as they were pushed away by GFU Esports Blue and Esperanza. That's how dominant they pushed them back here on Nepal Village. They make a statement. They say, we lost 3 2 the last time that we played. We're not going to do that again. We're not going to take the victory here. Yeah, a spectacular showcase here from. UH Horizon, indeed. They'll get themselves... Uh, they'll take away the flawless run of GFU Esports Blue in a well-earned performance as well. A map 5 game here, but uh, I think the story is two, very, uh, two teams very close in skill, hammering it out all the way to the end. And uh, I, I think the biggest takeaway, though, is for UH Horizon, the fact that they're not boomed by that Ishparansa map is a big deal, right? It's so it really easy is. to get into your own head after being dominated that badly on a map. But to take that and then come back and perform even better than you had at any other point in the series, that is a highlight-worthy performance for sure. And uh, a lot of credit has to be given to UH Horizon for it. Yeah, UH Horizon takes the victory in that series. And honestly, I got to give a big shout out to Yodo especially as well. I mean, from the antenates to the Mercy play to anything they really did on the support, it was all super valuable. Like you said, it's easy to call out supports with all their valuable abilities, but the fact that they hit them every single time and are also very survivable just makes it uh, all the more impressive. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, with that being said, I mean, that uh, adds to the run through that... Uh, UH Horizon has, I believe, three and one at this stage of the game. So very much staying towards the top end of the leaderboard at the uh, four week mark. And uh, again, a hearty performance from them as they continue to evolve and improve here in this squad. Yeah, for sure. So for that, that was it for this stream tonight on the NECC. Uh, of course, Give us a follow. Make sure that you're tuned in for the next NECC uh, streams. There's not just Overwatch. There's also other games each day. Another game is how we do it here. But for Overwatch, we'll be back next week with week five of the regular season of the NECC spring of 2023. So thank you all for watching and uh, see you in the next one.